Ah, hello, my friend. It is I, the beloved explorer Ventura de Velgard, your storyteller and captain of the Necrona, as the Skulltenders sail across the Wonder Sea in search of the Nevermind, the final resting place of a forbidden knowledge. As we speak, the Skulltenders are sleeping below a decks after facing many dangers in the white waters of the outer ring of the Wonder Sea, many of which I personally was unconscious for. They tell me we almost sail right off the edge. Can you believe it? But there is a big spar and oh, how she quiver. And also they tell me there was a very annoying man who I will not discuss further lest I summon him inadvertently. And after that, they said there was a big gross fish monster looking like a lighthouse, but darkness instead, if you say so. They fucked that guy up a pretty bad. And then Dudu the Owl, he say, let's a go into the big gray triangle. I say, hey, it's all the same to me. And away we go, sailing into the blue water of the middle ring of the Wander Sea. I know you ask, hey, Ventura, what's the deal with the water being a different color? And to that they say, stay tuned and enjoy the ride. When last we left our heroes, uh, they were sailing away from the disgusting remnants of the Night House, a giant sunfish that had become a battleship full of enough parasites to fill an extremely unpopular pet store. Uh, you'd agreed to make for the gray triangle of stone on the horizon the duty saw because it seemed somehow calm. Uh, you'd settled in to rest uh, after Ventura de Velgard volunteered to take first watch. Uh, Felicity and Dudu and Hammock strung from the ceiling down in the hold. Uh, Visk, of course, completely contained by Ventura de Vailgard's bucket hat slash fabric eyelid. Where is my jaw? Where did that end up? I don't know. Did I lose it? It's in the cooler somewhere, isn't it? Where's the cooler? <laughs> oh, yeah, the cooler's down here. I guess you could have gotten that, but you didn't <laughs> because that's not how we ended the scene. Why would I do this? I, you were probably just too tired, so... In- oh, I was so eepy, I crawled into the grossest thing possible to go to bed. <laughs> hey, hey, look. What scans? Been Who there. Who hasn't been there before? <sighs> and, and you know what? Maybe it would have been... Maybe anywhere else, it would have been hard to sleep in this thing, but it didn't take long before the gentle rocking of the Necrona carried all three of you off to sleep, and you each fell into a different dream, because that is how dreams work. <laughs> 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 So, like, I just wanted to clarify. Usually. I mean, look, it's a weird place. I, but, uh, you know, in the Wonder Sea, who, who knows what could happen? But you each fell into a different dream. Uh, I want y'all to tell me what those dreams are, but we're going to see who we start with. I'll be determining that. Ooh. Uh, oh, boy. Felicity, tell me what you're dreaming about. Rest doesn't come super easy to Felicity. When you have a, a mind that's like half full of half remembered memories and disjointed pieces of who you might have once been uh, your subconscious isn't like a super fun place to hang out with so she spent a night in tossing and turning getting a series of like disjointed images like a Italian youth stalking past a mirror in night a storefront is full of luxury goods and furniture she has light wood and dark sails and a contract mark acquisition a silver knife and a blade in the darkness a smell of vanilla rum smoke smoke from a hard leathery book and finally powerful jaws of a great animal snapping shut and churning wet you're cycling through these images and it's like you're seeing them in this cycle again you're seeing the book the storefront the jaws the book the storefront the mirrors the mirror the jaws and you stop in front of that mirror again I want you to tell me what you can see what Felicity sees in this mirror. It's all in it's all in like gray because it's dark. Because she has dark vision, mm-hmm. um, and we get to, we see a young Felicity Fairweather uh, sneaking through a place that very clearly is not hers. Not a place that she certainly remembers or recognizes anymore, but a place that is particularly opulent, beautiful hardwood, gold trim, various art and ceramics everywhere. Yeah, and the image in this mirror it begins gray but the longer you look at it it starts to take on more detail and color and despite the fact that it's dark it feels like the longer you look at it lights start to illuminate in the room and you see the glittering of eyes 
around the room, staring back at you. You know, like you look back over your shoulder, but there's there's nothing in the room that you're in. Mm. But the longer you look at it, just more and more sets of eyes, and you're just watching that. And then we're gonna hear what's. Let's see, Dudu, what are you dreaming about? Well, Dudu's dreams <clears throat> are about similar. You know, stress dreams you get sometimes, but you know, Dudu has fun because a lot of them are just uh, kind of weird labyrinths and stuff of old places you've been to. Uh, you know, your old school, your old town, your old whatever, your old shoes. And so you just, um, I'm just in one of those places, a labyrinth of places that kind of feels like an office, but there's other people there and they all have my head. Uh, so I'm, I'm in like some kind of meeting. It feels official. Um, and someone's telling me something, but you know, it's, it's, I'm not really paying attention to like the, the meat of the meeting. I'm, I'm sort of just realizing that I am, uh, somewhere. And then it, it kind of hits me when I look at it. I'm like, this is weird. I've never had a meeting with myself before. I kind of understand that I'm dreaming. Yeah. And Dudu gets a little lucid dreaming action. And uh, what does Dudu do? Dudu does what Dudu's always done. He goes straight for the closest Dudu and starts making out. <laughs> yeah, like heavy petting, like yeah. levels of just like, oh, I'm in a dream. Wee! And he just goes straight to the first Dudu, and there's. He's just making out. The doo-doo that's at the front, who had, like, his notes for the meeting, like, he says, all right, now we're going to move on to new business. Holy crap. That's hot as shit. Holy crap, Lois. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> you. I'm doing my best here. <laughs> the other, the other dude who's start to like clap. Yeah, wow. They're next if I have my way in the doo doo and my in my lucid dreaming. Like it's just the first thing doo doo goes for, you know. Hell yeah! I, when you recognize your lucid dreaming, it's just like, well, I'm gonna take advantage of this. I'm gonna have fun. Oh, that sounds like better than what I do, which is immediately plunge myself into the scariest thing I can think of involuntarily. <laughs> I just immediately become trapped in like, what would be the scariest thing possible? Like, and, like I get half it. Like, I hate realizing it because anyway, seems like a skill issue to me. Uh, <laughs> let me just rolling. What do you know? I rolled visc. Visc. Oh wow! What are you dreaming about? Who'd thunk? <laughs> well, you were gonna set up the initial part, right? Oh yeah. So. This you so you told me that Visk has been called in for a meeting, right? Right. Right, right. So you are you are standing in a hallway that you have not my meeting, I hope. No, I well, hope not. Let's find out. Uh <laughs> you are standing in a hallway that you have often found an excuse to walk down. Uh because it is a long hallway in City Hall, carpeted like any other crappy white walls like any other. But this hallway only has one door on one side, dead center of this long hallway, and that door has no knob. It is a simple mahogany door, and on that door is a small silver nameplate that reads, Mayor. It's the door to the mayor's office. You've never been in there. But you've always imagined, what is it? What could it be like in there? But now you know that you've been called, and what do you do? If allowed, I'd like to step through the door. Can I, I just push? Does it just open? Yeah, it, 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 as, at the lightest touch, it opens to reveal. Stepping through the threshold and politely closing the door behind them, Visk jumps at the heavy reverberant sound it makes. <laughs> they spin their ocular organs around to see that the ordinary office door is now at least four meters tall, an ornately carved hardwood masterpiece depicting an uncountable mass of intertwining figures in relief, mostly bones, they seem to writhe in the light of the fireplace. Visk, feeling oddly scandalized, averts their gaze and takes in the rest of the room. The ceiling soars to heights which the fireplace illumination cannot reach. The walls are adorned with enormous tapestries, elegant bookcases, and paintings that cannot settle on one design and shift continuously in styles and subjects. On the far end of the room is a desk that complements the door in size, material, and ambiguously carnal vibe. The mayor is not seated at the desk, but is instead sitting on a comfortable looking dark red leather couch, which is situated fireside. 
The flickering light highlights the sharp, stately structure of the mayor's skull, and he's loosening his tie. The flustered feeling intensifies. You wanted to see me, sir? So because of the way that the couch is positioned, you are inferring these gestures. You see the you see his, that simple black crown floating up over the top. You see the dome of his head. You see a hand reach around that's pulling a tie. But there is no answer when you ask. There's just there are these gestures, uh, and we are going to snap back to Felicity. You are staring into that mirror, and the longer you look in it, oh my god, there are just so many nice things in there. There's a jeweled treasure chest. There's a there's there's stacks of maps. There's uh, silks, bolts of silk. There's like boxes that you know are just filled with valuable trade goods. This is this is like a, this is a, the longer you look, you see. Oh, I want that. I want that. And every time you look at something, another set of eyes appears elsewhere in the room, and it's happening more and more. And then the eyes are starting. You look at your paws, and the eyes are starting to sprout on the backs of them uh. and stare up at you. And these eyes are opening up your arm and on your shoulders and on your chest, uh. and you see yourself in the mirror as your body comes just consumed by these eyes. Oh, fuck. It sucks. What do you do? I, I bring my paw to the mirror. I touch the mirror. Okay. Uh, make a dexterity saving throw to see whether you fall out of the hammock. Eight. Okay. Uh, so you are definitely, you, you, so you reach out a hand and you're just, you're just, you're so agile. It just like pulls your body halfway out of the hammock. And as you are falling, we are going to Inception style smash back to Dudu, who is now uh, joined just like that whole room. Everybody, all the Dudus <laughs> inside, out of each other. This is a fucking conga line of cloacas and beaks and zones and areas, wet feathers. <laughs> Just the, the calm is sliding off the feathers. <laughs> they have that thing that birds have to keep them from getting wet. Feathers? Yeah, that's it. Thanks. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, we can cut this if we have to. Mom, Dad, don't listen to this podcast. Sorry, Mom. Uh, she said she's seen Pulp Fiction, so it's fine. Uh, so, uh, do uh, make a uh, make a survival roll <laughs> to see. <laughs> <laughs> Whether this is safe. Okay. Survival roll, you say? Yeah. No, damn it. <laughs> 17. <laughs> oh, great. Uh, you have a good time. You are generous. <laughs> you are, you, you are, and you, and people are generous, and like the other duties are generous to you. It is a pleasant experience. I love myself. What can I say? You find a nice natural exit, uh, and you go to stand up. And I need you to also be like, you you feel right. your feet hit. The, yeah, you know what? You're fine. You, you that was I'm your on, role. I you, figure I'm on the ground. I'm like the bunk bed. You're style. on the hammock. Like you go to like get up, and it's like with the motion of that, uh, your feet, your human feet are about to hit. Uh, just like just get up out of the hammock. But we're gonna smash back to this. All these things are happening simultaneously. Ooh, it's just like in Run Lola Run. No, it's not. I haven't seen that movie. But it's, you know, it's like other movies where things happen. Yeah, yeah. It's like one of those fucking movies, yeah. you know? All right, Visk. You have, you've seen these gestures. You are still standing behind uh, this uh, elaborate leather couch. Uh, but the mayor has not responded to your words. You cannot, you can't see anything else from that side. Visk, like, slowly approaches and asks... Sir? You move around to stand between the fire and the mare, and you see not that mare that you know and love with the tie and with the missing jawbone and with the blue jacket. You see instead crucified against the couch a skeleton with long, thin horns, <laughs> silver knives pinning it by the eyes and hand and heart and feet to the couch. You! And it looks up at you, and it says, You abandoned me. Ah. You abandoned him. Who? You abandoned me. Uh, I'd like to do it again. <laughs> uh, this starts, Make a wisdom saving throw. This tries to run away. 
Uh, or a minus one. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, yeah, you run away in terror, uh, toppling yourself out of the oh so watertight on the inside bucket hat. Uh, still with that thin, vitreous humor slime on the inside that you can just quite feel absorbing. You slosh right out of the hat, and all three of you, Felicity falls out of the bed. <laughs> Dudu's feet hit the fucking planks, and Visk, you kind of gloop out. And you all wake up at the same time in the hold of the Necrona. Uh, 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 what a great dream. Uh, oh, uh, shit. Good morning. What a good night's sleep. How are you guys doing? <sighs> Been better. Been better. You okay, Flissy? You're on the ground. Yeah, yeah, I'm all right. She's like getting herself up and like dusting herself off, uh, dusting off her pajamas, uh, which is like... Oh, like, you know, red athletic shorts, which you, you might say, like, oh, those are cute little pair of shorts if you weren't distracted by the shirt, which is a significantly oversized white T-shirt that says Sensation Cleanup Crew. <laughs> and shows a man in a hazmat suit blasting a pervert with a fire hose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm all right. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll get on that next <laughs> week. <laughs> oh, that was not how I imagined that going. Imagine what going? What'd you dream about? Uh, nothing. I'm fine. Okay. Where are we again? <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. You're in the hold of the Necrona. Oh, the, yeah. Uh, the ship on the Wonder Sea. Yeah. I didn't know if you were asking me or just ambiently the world. It, everyone. The whole, the whole vibe. Yeah, you all realize uh, sort of simultaneously... I decide, because we've been doing a lot of rolls already. You all realize, oh shit, none of you were woken up for watch. Oh. Like, you, Ventura was supposed to wake Felicity, and then it was supposed to go to Visk, and then to Dudu for the night, for the watch, but uh, none of you got woken up in the night. It's morning? Yeah. Uh, did you guys wa watch? I don't remember. No, no. No, no, uh -oh. no. All no, right, up, no. Upstairs, upstairs. Right. Uh-oh. Okay. Uh, you run up onto the... You're all following up, I assume. Uh, Felicity, you run up onto the deck of the Necrona. Uh, the sails snap overhead, full of the winds of intention. Uh, the salty water, still not as salty as you'd expect, sprays up onto the deck, hits you in the face like a, like a morning face wash. Got it. Yeah. Nailed it. Ah, this is why they pay me... Uh, well, they don't pay me much anymore. Uh, <laughs> all right, well... <laughs> sorry, just got fired. Uh, so... <laughs> This is actually our first episode we're recording after the show Yay. launch, so it's, it's, there's, this is a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, good morning, my friend. Uh. Up, up at the wheel is a uh, big, gross eye exposed to the world is uh, Ventura de Velgard. Ew, forgot about that. Visk had grabbed the bucket hat uh, on the way up and is just going to like throw it at <laughs> their head. Whip it at them. Hold on, let me just make it quick. Whipping it roll for Ventura. Oh, fucking roll to 17. Uh, but he like ducks and just catches. It just like lands perfectly. <laughs> like Charlie Chaplin style. Like something Charlie Chaplin would have like invented running cameras backward to suggest. It just like lands, pop out his head. It's a little gross, but he's like, good morning, buongiorno, other Italian phrases. Uh, it <laughs> Ventura, is everything okay? I don't. Yeah. You never woke us up for watch. Oh, Bon Jovi to you. Why didn't you wake us up? Ah, my friends, I um, you seem kind of like he's like a little bit, uh, a little bit bashful. I had uh, not particularly distinguished myself in the events so far. It did not seem right to stir those who fled for my safety from their well-earned breast. But look, see, we have passed into the blue seas. Uh, if you, if you, as you look around, you can see that um, the Necrona has indeed passed from that clear, that white band of water that you were in, where it was shallower, where you began, and into the blue water that is closer to the center. Uh, you, re you recall from when you were falling from a great height that it sort of goes like white, blue, and then black in the center. And there was something in that, something in that blackness at the center that called to do do. I had, uh, I had intended to make breakfast for us. And he gestures behind you, behind him, and there's like, you know, the, like boxes and plates and whatever you might 
reasonably expect a little fire, frying pan. He's like, I'd intended to wake you with breakfast, but you know, it's the strangest thing. I realize uh, it has been so long since I cooked something, I could not seem to recall the right meal for such an occasion. Oh, hell yeah. Breakfast? Now that's my language. I speak breakfast. <laughs> you don't say. I speak <laughs> Italian. You don't say. <laughs> Mind oh, if no, I take I a whip at it? C- Italian? Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, make a uh, make a scrounge roll. Yay. Baby. Scrounger. Do it with advantage because there's a bunch. It is just like all this stuff. Are Italians and Catalians related? Let's pretend. Yeah, it's uh, no, I meant Catalian. I forgot. <laughs> oh, with advantage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted this to go well. So you got advantage. Felicity, why don't you have an accent? Oh, I'm, you know, I'm ethnically Italian, but I, I wasn't raised in, like, oh. Italian community. You know. Nat 20. Oh. <laughs> there we fucking go. Wow. The first roll is a three. <laughs> you, you, like, you, you, you look under a bag of moldy bread and hardtack and just a box that just says uh, scurvy enhancer. You like move that aside to find a, another box full of fresh fruit and fro- and like whatever you want. Pretty much, you rolled that well. What do you cook? What are you cooking? Well, who wants what? I got I got this under wraps. What would be the perfect breakfast for you, Visk? Uh, I have only recently learned how to eat, so I guess w- w- what do you recommend? How about a big fat cinnamon roll for you? <gasps> yes. I don't know what that is, yes. You're going to love it. Felicity, what are you thinking? Uh, eggs Benedict, please. Eggs, I'm going to give you the most fanciest hollandaise sauce. I'm going to make the fanciest hollandaise sauce with all I got right here. I know you will. And Dudu whips up. He, like, rubs her little paws together in excitement. The fattest, juiciest-looking cinnamon roll. <sighs> Puts it big as, big as Visk's head. <laughs> make one for me, friend. That looks great. Wow. Makes two. Wow! As big as Visk's head. Wow. <laughs> uh, or just kind of kind of slices it in half and is like, you know what? Maybe this will help you. Yeah, <laughs> maybe a little bit for everybody. He takes one. He has the helm in like one the, in one hand, and the other he's just like taking mm. huge like driving to his fucking <gasps> job, eating a, eating like a breakfast burger, bites out like still eyes on the road. Uh, Felicity, your uh, eggs Benedict with hollandaise uh, comes out on a like a. Uh, a bronze platter. Mm-hmm. Looks like it may have begun life as treasure, but it's now that was this. Oh, it's still treasure to me. I perfectly poach the eggs. I I make the, the, the like. The, you know what hollandaise sauce you can tastes break the like? Hollandaise. The eggs no. are perfectly poached. Perfect. Oh. Right on some toast, baby. My compliments to the chef. And for me, oh, and for me, doo doo. Well, I'm taking a little bit of everything and making my favorite oh. meal which is a sandwich with everything else in it. Uh, sausage, eggs, some of that cinnamon roll. Call it the monster breakfast, baby. Wow. Oh. Only now at Carl's Jr. That's right, my friend Carl's Jr. told me how to make this one. Huh. He sometimes go by his surname, Hardy's, but he, uh, I always knew him as Carl. Um, hey, uh, Carl's Jr. Hardy's. All right. <laughs> Research sponsorship opportunities. Yeah, uh, I don't want them to sponsor us. That thing is heartbreakingly big. <laughs> <laughs> My I should know. I've had several. <laughs> I have. I have just the thing to accompany, and from within his coat, uh, still clutching the, uh, still clutching the half of cinnamon roll, he pulls out a full pitcher of mimosas with a little rubber lid on the top. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Here you are. And he, he, Mimosas he, he, for all. Yeah. I believe there are stone cups somewhere. And he, he finds some, like, nice little stone stone cups. Mm-hmm. Evocative. Good. I'm not allergic to this. <laughs> yes. Yes, I can see it. Ah. Thank you. Wow. A cinnamon roll for my precious little cinnamon roll of a character. Amazing. <laughs> Yeah, uh, <laughs> I put a little flower crown on it too. <laughs> I thought it when it was said. <laughs> I also I like, yeah, cinnamon rolls, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I forgot about that aspect I of the woo ness. <laughs> yes. Visk eats the cinnamon roll. All right. As y'all are enjoying breakfast, uh, he is continuing. He's like, it is so nice. I must say, it is so nice. This fellowship, this breaking of bread or 
whatever this is in particular, there's definitely bread in it. In a oh, cinnamon it's, roll. It's broken. Yeah, this is yeah. It's easy this to break could up. taste better than this. You're telling me. And no, no, in a gesture of goodwill, I break this bread for everyone. Oh, oh hell yes. <laughs> I love it. Tearing it apart, I see. Yeah. Yeah, like you're sharing it with friends. It is so good, Dudu. Oh my god. Mm-mm. That extra drizzle. I thought the nachos were good. This is incredible. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. Yeah, it's so much to teach you. So many sights to show you. What? Is this what living is like? You get to do this stuff all the time. Yup. Eat all sorts of. Wow. Yeah, you do this, like, usually about three times a day. Three times? Yeah. That would explain the prevalence of choking deaths. Three times. Wow. Listen, it, it's not always this good. Let's be honest. Sometimes you, sometimes you just need some like you just crunching on ramen noodles or something. Yeah. Sometimes it's beans and toast. Sometimes it's chips. Those all sound great. Okay. Well, you're in for a treat. Wow. Except the beans and toast. <laughs> uh, it's probably fine. I am the enemy of British people. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense as a Catalan. <laughs> ah yes, many other times are fam- uh, not the British, uh, uh, British, no, mm. <laughs> the brittle people, the brew, the great boo brittle. British, the boo British, great, br- great brittle, great brittle, brittle's good. Thank you. So, food is good. Dreams can be good too. Beg pardon. You- <gasps> According to Dudu, you had a good one. I haven't had a good one yet. It's pretty okay one. Yeah. They, they, they make good ones. You had dreams. Wonderful. They make good dreams sometimes. Vincent did say something about that. My bro- Vincent said something of dreams. Oh, he said that prophecies are kind of like dreams. They're vague and hard to remember unless they involve people you know or people are fucking in it. Ah, interesting. This like flushes a little because there's like <laughs> clay in their system for when they shook hands with the weird guy. No, that's my brother. That's not you. Don't worry. That's my brother. That's that's not you. It's interesting that you bring him up and you bring up prophecy. I have never. Uh, did, uh, I do not dream in sleeping. I have never dreamed. My sister was the dreamer. Uh, do you mind if I tell you? Is this is a bit of a story, but I will continue to steer. We are heading toward the uh, the gray rocks. Yes, we ended it. Still got tri- plenty to eat, baby. We have a good time. Got to watch something while I eat. This mouth is uh, full of cinnamon roll, and they're like, <laughs> "Hey, go ahead." Uh, ricochet. Felicity's alternating bites and putting uh, bites of it onto the blade of ricochet, which eats it. <laughs> oh, delicious! Yum. Yes, please for me. Thank you. Yum. 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 Oh, hey. Hey. It's Ventura. It is. Ventura, how are you? Oh. Ricochet. I did, with this, I did not have time to, oh, it is a pleasure. Oh, yeah, how long has it been? <laughs> oh, I did not, before I was. Look what you did. Now this is the rest of the episode. No, no, it's, I don't want to, this. I, I know, I know. She's yes, you know, I'm, like, you know, <laughs> you you find you work where you can, you know, you find the work you can get. It is funny that you, uh, it is funny that you bring up dreams, that you bring up prophecy, and that you bring up that sword. For you see, when I was a child, my sister Vesper, uh, I've told you of her, I think. <laughs> we, uh, you, you, you met my brother Vincent in a fashion, yes. Yes. Yeah. Met his, uh, his... His incredible mechanism. Yes. Um, my sister, she would, when we were children, she would have nightmares. You see, night after night, the same dream. Our grandfather breaking down our door, killing our parents, ki- attacking us in our room that we shared together. It was, it was absurd. Our grandfather, he was, he was such a kind man and so frail with the many quiet weaknesses of old age and a life well lived. And when he, when he died, I hoped, I, it, it, I, I, it, I confess, I felt some relief for I thought my sister would be free of these dreams that plagued her. But Vesper's nightmares only grew worse. Our parents were patient, but I confess I grew irritated being woken every night by her screaming at nothing. My brother, 
Vincent ignored her stuffed his ears, and but the, the week after our grandfather died, woken again in the middle of the night by her screams, I shouted at her, he's dead, you don't have to be afraid anymore. And I was shouting at her, shouting at my crying sister's face when my father's body comes crashing through the bedroom door. What can you do? Followed by, of course, my grandpa. What can you do? What can you do? It had it been happens. a week. It had been a week. It had only been a week, but... Uh, but he died. Yes, a week before, but it oh. uh, was still him. Who was throwing these bodies at the door? Well, no, see, he was the one who was moving. Uh, oh, necromancy, right. Yes, perhaps I tell the story, Yes. Greek traumatic tale. Yes. Uh, it was not him. It was his corpse, pierced by these hideous, shining strings, twitching like a dying fish on a hook, like a... Like a... Uh, I know I just told you to not talk, but this would be a great time to chime in dramatically. Oh, well, wow. You already said yeah. dying fish on a hook. What do you want? Yes. This is not quite like a strings? fish. Strings? What's the word? What's the word? The cre- uh, creature on the, the, the little man. Oh, the little marionette. The marionette. Yes. Puppet. There we go. That was it. Suddenly, for me, this, this, this dancing on these strings, the terrible, bloated little corpse of my grandfather clawing towards us over my father's body, my sister screaming, uh... And then suddenly, from the ceiling, a bucket of molasses fall on my grandfather's corpse. And then a wardrobe. Classic. Yes? It come a-crashing down on... It was a trap, you see. My brother Vincent. I thought he had just ignored her, but uh, he listened to her more than anyone. He prepared. You see, he prepared a trap. Another one of his mechanisms. Yes. And then out the window, I see every house in the village. Every house in the village. The dead. With those shining strings in their hands and feet were going after living relatives, killing them in their beds, dragging the bodies out into a pile in the street, laying them at his feet. Whose feet? The man holding all the strings, the spider at the center of the web. Yes, you say it already, the necromancer. Mm. It's my first time seeing such a creature in his terrible robes. His wicked dexterity of his fingers dancing. I did not see his face, but those hands... I will never forget. But then... I have a, I have a lead. Spell and Zani? Big pardon? I do not know. You know? I, I shouldn't say anything unless I'm sure. We met someone reminiscent of this tale. Oh, this cannot be the same man because this man was killed. Well... Well, no, 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 I say, I, I tell you, I tell you what to see, because this, this is when the story becomes nice, happy breakfast fair. Mm. You see? Oh. Because there she was. You see, I saw, I saw many things in my long life, my friends, and more in my afterlife, as I lingered in ghost town, waiting for the day we would meet, but I have never seen anything like Victoria Veilgard and her wrath. The moonlight on her silver armor, her red hair like a mane. She was like somebody carved a lion out of an avalanche. Jagged black blade, that sword, yes. She cut the strings and then the dead start dancing and she chased this terrible man away and kill him later, uh, somewhere else. I don't see this. She, she, she'd spare us, you see. she spare us the vision and she'd take us in. she raise us. But ever since then, I have a fear of strings and of horrible spiders and so I apologize that on the river I did not comport myself with the dignity of someone of my great agent's group. I hope this breakfast and taking the watches will make up for this. It is quite okay, Ventura. Certainly. It does. And I thank you again. Um, he sort of like comes to a rest is like, this is like taking a lot out of him. <laughs> like, oh. Felicity. Visk turns to her. Yes, Visk? May I ask your sword a question? <laughs> By all means. She holds the sword out in front of her, but not like pointed at Visk. Just like holds... It flat in her hands. Thank you. Just kind of leans next to the sword, not sure how to like talk to it. Uh, Ricochet, can you uh, correlate any of that story? I think you were in it. This, you try to say that. Oh. Ooh, you try to say that, but um, 
and like you and like you do all the things that you do when you talk and you can feel you can feel those things internally you can feel that sound waves are coming out of your mouth but what you hear yourself say is nothing and you realize that you don't hear the ocean anymore the wonders you don't hear that you don't hear the wind you don't hear the sizzle of the grill uh, like winding down the oil. You're looking around and you're seeing a lot of things that should be making sound and they're not. I'm going to need everybody to make a wisdom saving throw. You don't hear doo doo dumping the fat from the pan into the sea. Just like, don't need this. <laughs> doo doo, you don't hear that either. That's not a d20. What am I doing? I'm blind and deaf. 15. Okay. Uh, this is uh, minus one. Uh, 18. Wow. 14 for doo doo. Okay. Ooh. Hard fail. Hard fail for our beloved boy, Ventura. <laughs> Oops. Uh, he, was, he was feeling rough from the story. Mm -hmm. That's what you get for being sad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, fuck that guy. But also, nobody succeeded. <gasps> uh -oh. So as Ventura has been, was telling this story, you've been moving closer and closer to that gray triangle of stone out on the horizon. You all noticed it, but it just it didn't seem worth worrying about. And the longer it's been going, and that's now, especially when it's so quiet, there's nothing to worry about. Everything seems really chill. Um, the waves and wind have gradually grown quieter and down to silent, which is weird, and especially because you don't seem to be slowing down at all. In fact, you seem to be going faster uh, straight at that gray triangle, which and this is really fun. I know you're going to love this. You see now that it was actually the angle of your approach that made the rocks look like a triangle, but this is actually just the illusion of a long, wide row of jagged rocks that are rising out of the sea like a staircase to nowhere, stretching out to a vanishing point on the horizon that makes them look like a triangle. Isn't that neat? Ooh. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, you're about 300 feet away from these, and you will hit them in about 30 seconds. And we're all deaf. Uh, Felicity moves to drop the anchor, pulling the lever. Okay, love that. That is going to be the first thing that happens. Uh, but we are going to now roll for initiative. Shit. Are we all deaf? Yeah, I guess we'll find out right now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 13. Oh, wait, plus uh, one. 14. Dirty 20. Uh, 14 again. Ooh, we tied. What's your dex bonus, doo doo? And what's your dex bonus, this? One. Two. Okay, Dudu goes first. That's how you do that. Last. <laughs> well, Felicity goes first, then Dudu the me. Oh, perfect. That ended up really well. Now I don't have to do a special extra round. Uh, and then Ventura did not go so fast. Uh, Grandpa got him. That's what happens when grandpas get you. Yeah, this is what happens when you try to process your trauma. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, not on my fucking podcast. <laughs> Just don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> more sustainable that way just don't yeah exactly mm -hmm. yeah you just keep you just keep standing on a taller and taller pile of your own unprocessed trauma until you are king of the world exactly until you can see over the horizon you push it down like a trash can you don't want to take the trash out of yet yeah yeah mm -hmm. felicity uh it is your turn you can take you said i believe you wanted to pull the lever to drop the anchor yeah you go and drop the anchor what occurs? <laughs> uh, just to be clear, do I hear anything in the process of this? Do no. I nothing at all? No. It, it, fortunately, you think to ask. Uh, after you drop the anchor, uh, you are going to make another wisdom saving throw for me. That one's an eight. Ooh, yeah. That's that also doesn't succeed. Unfortunately. Uh, do you have anything else you want to do? Uh, does anything happen when I fail, or do I just? You just, yeah, things are really quiet and chill. You drop the anchor, though. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think that's probably it for me for now, That I'm just going to drop the anchor. Yeah, it seems like probably not great that you're heading, but you dropped the anchor, so things are probably going to be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Doodoo, it's your turn. Uh, the world is so chill right now. It's quiet. It's quiet. There's those rocks. There's those rocks. It's the rocks. What is the... Uh... What's, what, the sails are unfurled. Do, are they like they flapping in the wind and all that stuff? Oh yeah, the wind like the winds are just like fully in those sails, like they just like full. Can I furl 
kind of furl those or unfurl, which is the term. Absolutely. Yeah, you uh, you want to furl the sails. Yeah, you can absolutely like do the thing you do and see if it makes the boat go slower now. Yes. I furl the sails as I grab the little thing behind me. Okay, that you've been on the boat for 24 hours at this point. You know what you're doing. Yay. You understand this is a basic action now that you've been on the boat. Mm-hmm. Uh, the ship slows down. Uh, if it had just been the anchor, we probably would have done a Tokyo Drift style thing. <laughs> but because you have furled the sails, the ship is now slowing down significantly. As a, can I do one more action? Absolutely. I would like to go towards the steering wheel. The helm, yeah, 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 the helm. The steering wheel? Yeah, 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 Ventura is at that. It's just like a little, oh, he's at that. What is he doing? Uh, he is like... He looks like he's like miles away. He is staring direct. He is staring at something. I'm going to go to that wheel. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go to that wheel and take control. Just put my hands on it for a bit. You see his mouth moving and he is like struggling against you. He's like looking at you and like saying something. But uh, I'm going to need you make a wisdom saving throw doo doo. Okay. I was just going to push his ass away. Just like, yeah, I got it. Yeah. Wisdom saving throw. Oh, okay, I'm giving them giving me enough room. Give me a good solid roll here. Yeah. And I fucking got a two. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like um, plus two, so four. Ooh, a four though. A four though. I think that's still less than yeah the thing you already got. But you, so you're you're struggling against. But it's like you did already do that one action. Getting up to here is like this turn. Yeah. It yeah. still seems fine. Uh, something is going to do something and succeed. Uh, and Ventura is going to walk down the stairs to where you just furled the sail, and he is going to try to unfurl that very same sail. Can I grab his ass as a as an attack of opportunity? Are you attacking him as soon as he walks away from the wheel or until he goes, or when he goes down and unfurls the sail? I guess I wouldn't know he's doing that until he actually yeah. does it. So, sorry. Never mind. All right. But you are at the helm now. Yeah. And like on your turn, you will be at the helm. Uh, Felicity is back to being your turn. The boat has moved closer to the no, walls. Is it? What about that visc? Hmm? What about that gooey friend of ours? Yeah. Felicity went first. Felicity had a 20. I did. Visc hasn't acted yet. Oh, shit. How did that happen? Sorry. Uh, <laughs> it was just the next card. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> A little cinnamon roll, we like to call this, because it needs yeah. to go next. Okay, Visc, it is your turn. Okay. Uh, Visc drizzled over a cinnamon roll. <laughs> Someone draw that. Oh, love it. <laughs> Gross. Uh, Visc is going to try to, like, communicate via gestures. Like, can anyone else hear? Like, they're, they're flapping around and, like, trying to indicate, like, ears, like, X, like, crossing arms, X, like, what's going on? Like, but we all... We all feel calm though. Like, are why are we, why are we? Who even... are you trying to get? Whose attention are you trying to get? Whoever's closest, I guess. Felicity's. Uh, I, I don't know. Felicity, where did we leave you? I've dropped the anchor, and I'm just like on the deck. Okay, yes. Yeah, so Felicity is in the center yeah. of the deck. Is like on the center of the deck. Uh, yeah. Dudu, Dudu would still be closest to you at the helm. Felicity would be down on the deck since the, you were cooking breakfast up on the helm. Oh, okay. That's where we were. Well, this mm-hmm. is gesturing at Doo trying to do charades to indicate, like, any communication about, like, can you hear or is it just me? Okay, make a performance roll. I want to see how good this gesturing is. Yeah, yeah. I got to do something about that. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is good. This is good. Uh, huh? Hey, 15 plus three. Oh, that's great. Um, okay. You are going to make a wisdom saving throw. Doo you're going to make a wisdom saving throw with advantage because of what, uh, this is trying to communicate to you. Okay. Uh, that was a 11. Okay. 12, 4, 10. <sighs> oh, sorry. Ugh. You know that you can't hear each other. That doesn't, that seems weird. That seems weird. Um, it's, it's like there is part of you that is arguing with another part of you. Both of you. You're both like something. This doesn't feel right. This doesn't feel right, but there's another part of you that's like, it's fine. It's fine. And it is almost drowning out your own internal monologue, not with anything specific, just like a, just like almost like a blanket being pulled over your mind, trying to like put you back in bed. And you're, you're having to push against that. 
It's uh, if somebody is, was has ever, had ever been like in withdrawal from their ADHD medication, it feels a lot like that, where you're just having to think through like you're walking down a wet beach in like heavy socks. It's just like every step is mentally it's getting harder and harder to think. But you're, there's another part of you that's pushing against that. Dude, what's up? Since me and Visk were since Visk was trying to like talk to me, and all I can do is just be like, huh, what? Uh, can I relay an idea at the very least to her, uh, 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 to Viz, sorry, uh, uh, through the same kind of miming gesture? Yeah. Or is that like a turn? I had to wait for Talk, me. Talking is a free action. I think that this gesturing is now taking the place of talking because okay. this mm. did really well with mm-hmm. their gestures. They have established a shared language now and you can just, you two okay. can just do that freely now. So you can, you can communicate as long as you're looking at each other. D- uh, you know, Dudu puts his hand up hands up and like the huh what kind of thing like just like basically pointing back like can't can't don't know what um but then like sees the unfurling happen and then just like like points to uh ventura and then this can be like can you oh can you get that guy can you get that if if possible i'd like to like scoot down there slime down there real fast and do something you still have movement yeah okay uh i i would like to scoot down there and try to tackle Ventura. Uh, that's going to be, we're going to, that, that communicate, the first attempt to communicate with Dudu because he forced those roles was your action. So that would be mm. a little bit too much, but okay. you can get up to him. You can get like right there. Okay. I'm going to try to get between Ventura and the sales. He's, he's like there f- fucking with it, but you are distracting. It is going to be harder on his turn um, mm. to do that. Felicity, it is your turn. Um, Where's the sail in relative to the, the lever I'm pulling? It's like, it's on the side, so it's like five feet away. Okay, all right. And I would see everyone moving around, so I would see everybody going for the sail. Yep. In fact, uh, make a perception check real quick. Yep. 21. Okay, fantastic. So let's go. Okay, that's actually, I was just going to say that you saw well enough to have sort of like joined in the shared language, and now you can con- communicate visually. But I think that for that role so well, I want you to... Like Dudu, I want you to make a wisdom saving throw with advantage. Okay. One of us has got to get out of this. <laughs> <laughs> a seven and a ten. Okay. That doesn't succeed. Uh, not yet. Yeah, not yeah. yet. Yeah. <laughs> but now, now it's your turn. But a nat 20 on fucking breakfast, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should save them, really. The most important role mm-hmm. of the, of the yeah. episode. Breakfast. Mm-hmm. How big of a guy is Ventura, would you say? Uh, I think it's, it's like tall, like it, it explorer type, you know, St- like sturdy, sturdy, big, big, sturdy, stocky guy. All right. Yeah. Uh, well, I see him trying to uh, unfurl the sails and obviously we're trying to avoid that. I don't know why he's trying to do that, but it certainly seems like a bad idea to me as someone who just dropped the anchor. He actually looks like he's whistling to himself, although you can't hear it. He's like just like going about his business like he's just like, ah, what an adventure. Uh, I don't think I have much. I would have much luck trying to muscle him considering he is he's larger and most likely stronger than me i'm gonna try to sweep his legs okay excellent uh make a um make an unarmed attack roll uh which is a a d20 you do not have a proficiency oh wait you have your cat claws i have my claws make a cat make it like that same thing all right 19 okay yeah that that'll do it uh make it yeah, make it like, like roll your damage, which should I think is like a D four plus D four plus three. Yeah, <laughs> max damage to Ventura. Six. Yeah. Six. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You kick out a foot. It's, you've got boots on, right? Yeah, I got boots on. Uh, you sweat. Yeah, you catch. You you like hook it around his foot, and he just he goes down pretty hard. Uh, you don't hear it, but you feel it as it as you feel a lot of pain on your leg as all of his uh, all of his weight like comes down on your leg and that pain let me make just check something here saving me a lot of trouble as the audio editor this is a lot of not sound effects yeah I was thinking that what we would do for this would be like um, the music of like a silent movie <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> didn't know it would be so goofy in nature yeah 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 uh, you're gonna take one damage from ensure falling on your leg and sweeping him but because of that one damage, you're going to make a wisdom saving throw that is going to be easier because of the pain. Okay. Oh. 
You were damaged by something other than the source of whatever this is. 14. Yeah. What do you know? That does it. Uh, <laughs> I was so looking forward to a crit fail. That would be really funny. That would have been really good. <laughs> I should have lied. <laughs> Broke your leg immediately. <laughs> you realize it's like, this had, this had seemed like silence. This had seemed like nothing was making sound. But now you can kind of hear the difference. And what you are hearing is the loudest white noise you've ever heard. It is blocking out everything. It's like it is like the sonic equivalent of an extremely bright light. But it's but that is just it doesn't change the color of anything. But it is you are it is just muting everything. There is something like, like the slightest little hiss rises up. Uh, like a knife into my back from Jess for this whole fucking sequence. I was but like, gonna say the listeners are gonna love it. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be great. I'll do my best. Uh, I have faith in you. Uh, <laughs> so you hear, you hear, and you you can looking over the side of the ship, which is drawing closer to those rocks. Not as fast as it was. Not as fast as it was. You see her. You see something rising out of the water just past where the rocks begin. A woman with her mouth wide open, too open, freaky style, slightly wider than you would expect, you know, like a gross mouth. Uh, her arms are raised up over her head in exultation, and long aquamarine hair spills down her back like a cape interwoven with starfish and seashells. She's moving her mouth and body in the clear posture of somebody who's just like singing their lungs out. And that is where all of this white noise is just coming out. And you remember, you remember from something in your not quite remembered past, you know that this is the song of the silence. Uh, they did it. They done did it. You're caught in. And this, and, uh, Dudu, it is now your turn. You are at the helm. Do I see? I don't see the silence yet, right? You don't see it. You don't see this yet. But you are at the wheel. <clears throat> and no uh, no competition. Ooh. So we're slowing down. We're getting closer. You are still moving towards it. Yeah. The ship is still... The, the, the ship is still angled directly at these rocks. Closing in. Uh, talking is a free action, right? Yes. I, I point at it. Point at what? The silent. Okay. Now I established that you guys all have this shared hand gesture language now. So uh, yeah, due to you get the impression from Felicity that there is something down there. Okay. And following where her claw is pointing, uh, you see the same thing I just described. You see just a woman, just a woman, just with a, a slightly bigger mouth. Ooh. Due to poggers at it, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now to do that, you you would need to turn. So now you are facing behind the ship. Like in terms of you face backwards behind the ship and behind you in the distance, you see a red X on the horizon. I do do decides maybe to turn the ship away from the thing. Oh, yeah. I feel like that's a good idea. You easily do that. It is now no longer headed towards the rocks. It is it is moving in a at an angle that will take it parallel with this like corridor of rocks, but you are no longer charging directly towards them. The ship has slowed down. You have turned it. You guys prioritize not crashing into the rocks. Good job, uh, team. So, yeah. Okay, so I'm, I'm doing that, and then, and then as an action again, to, to talk. Mm -hmm. I, I point downstairs. Mm -hmm. I hold a, a circled hand above me, and then I point a finger inside the hand that looks kind of gross. <laughs> but then I'll, but right. I, I'll, but I'm also like showing it come out of the hand, which also uh -huh. kind of feels gross if you think about <laughs> yeah, it. But I'm, act, but I'm not I'm not suggesting anything gross. I just don't know how to tell them to go downstairs. It may be, you know. I'm gesturing to like, cannon, cannon, shoot that bitch. Yeah. Dudu seems to is shoot that ma'am. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now when she gets blown apart by a cannon, it won't be sexist. <laughs> Give it a try. Maybe it yeah. will be sexist when she blows up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, this is communicated. Uh, it is now the silence turn. Do you just the hand motion for sexism? <laughs> oh, yep. Yeah, we all know it. Yes. Yeah, the one we're all familiar with. Um, 
What's the sexist hand gesture? The ring? Look, let's let's not try to figure out what it is. <laughs> we're good. We're good. No, this is interesting. Chime in in the comments. The most sexist hand gesture. <laughs> yeah, but you but you have to describe it. Mm -hmm. You have to describe it. I don't want to see a picture. Yeah. I just want to hear what it is. Yeah, don't draw this. Yeah. Like whoever whoever gets the best one will just will declare on Skull Talkers. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll block you. you, will, you will, yeah, that's what you win. All right, no, this uh, the silence uh, uh, sees that the ship is now no longer no longer like running on a collision course with the rocks, and you see her brow furrow, and she like changes like the direction, and she now sings like she's like looking down and singing whatever she's doing at the water, and you see a trio of crescent fins pop up around her sticking out of the water, crescent-shaped. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like sort of a bent triangle, and they start making their way directly towards the ship. So I just gotta put some more things in here real quick. Some more puns. <laughs> no! I'm desperate. Like shark, <laughs> silent shark, uh, static shark. Uh, static shark! Like shock. I was gonna say great white noise. Did I do it? Oh, that's good too. That's also good. Yeah. yeah, these are all these are all good. These are all good. Are we uh, nailing it? Did we get it? Uh-huh. No, I mean these are good. That's not what's happening, but it's like it's <laughs> good. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Could have been. Where were you yesterday? Or this morning? Uh, <laughs> Editing the show. <laughs> oh, right. That's it. These crescent fins pop up from the water around her and start making their way directly towards the ship. Uh they close the distance all three of them, uh, about halfway. It is uh, Ventura's turn. Uh, he is on his ass. He is... Uh, oh, he rolls actually pretty well. Uh, he shakes his head, and he, like, looks around in terror, and he's, like, talking. He's, like, gesturing with his mouth. He's like... And he, uh... You, what do y'all are doing? You're just... Wait, who's, ne who's near? I am. I, I'm... Oh, wait, wait, you're on the floor, maybe, from tripping him. Yeah, he's actually on top of Felicity's leg, yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, from when you did a back... Was you, I knocked prone as well? Well, you held back and pressed A to do a sweep kick. I did. Um, he landed on your leg. I would say probably... You'll probably you're prone. Yeah, okay. You'll probably have to use half your movement to stand up. Uh, he is, however, going to uh, like grab you by the shoulders and try to shake you. Uh, That's it. That's the sexist hand gesture. Shaking. <laughs> shaking a woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that does do it. Yeah, that actually does it. Uh, Felicity, uh, you are now... Whatever he is trying to communicate, you get that shit is fucked up. Something is really violently wrong. But you already looked over the side, so you knew that. So it's the most sexist gesture because a man is shaking you by the <laughs> shoulders and yelling something at you that you already knew. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we figured it out. Uh, and that is, he is going to, he is going to uh, kind of like glance around and he is going to go up to the side of the ship and like his, his uh, eyeball starts glowing. <laughs> Sure. He t and he, take, he reveals his hat, and his eyeball just starts like glowing. Uh, Visk, it's your turn. Gross. Uh, Visk is going to see if they can uh, talk to Jude. Oh, interesting. Oh. Because that's all mental. Jude, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay, great. Do you have any idea what's going on? I can't hear anyone else. Right. Hmm. This is weird. Hold me over the side. The cat was pointing at something. Yes, uh, Visk looks. Uh, yeah, you see uh, the you see the figure that has now been spotted by both Felicity and Dudu. At this point, uh, you see the silence, and you also see uh, those three crescent fins making straight towards the boat. Oh, jeez. Okay. Uh, processing. Processing. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Dude, I don't suppose you're loaded right now. No, still not. If I get you water, will you be? Aren't you loaded with other things? <laughs> Yes, but I used a lot of my better spell slots. Perhaps try one of your many spells that you can cast at will, you cop. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> You're calling me a cop? No, that's a compliment coming from me. I'm a gun. You didn't say it very nicely. I just said I'm a gun. <laughs> God damn it, okay. <laughs> I'm not your friend. Well, clearly not. <laughs> How far away is this fucking ma'am. Uh, she, at this point, she's like about 100, 150 feet. Those, uh, and the, the fins are like, I don't know, 50. You know what? Let's say she's a lot closer than that. She's 100 feet. They're like 50 feet. Let's just move this along. 
<laughs> because everybody's been staring and looking out, the ship has still like been blown a little bit closer. Despite the sails being pulled and everything, it's because your attention is focused down there. So you're still you're not going to crash into the rocks, but you're like not really you're moving more parallel with them. Uh, can I, can I cast anxiety attack on these not sharks that are imminently heading toward us, but they are within my range? Sure. Uh, have, remind me the is this the thing you did to Dylan? People? Dylan. Okay. Oh yeah. No. Good. Good call. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Go for it. Uh. Visk sees these uh, scary fins uh, approaching, does not know if it's multiple targets or anything like that, so they're just going to kind of aim like in the general center of, of this, mm-hmm. and they're going to uh, cast Anxiety Attack and unleash a torrent of anxious thoughts at these sharks, hopefully to, uh, you know, incapacitate them and make them think twice about charging the ship. Sure, sure, sure. Reasonable. Uh, it's got to succeed on a wisdom saving throw or be incapacitated, I yes. believe. Yes. Okay. Let's see. It is not good at that. Uh, I think your DC is what, 13 still? Spell save DC is 15. Oh, e- oh even better. Uh, ah, guess what? Uh, it fails. Yay! Uh, I hope I aimed true. You, the center of the three fins, suddenly uh, veers off and starts swimming in a little circle as the other two are moving towards you. Does that, does it take any damage? Uh, yes. Oh, sorry. At the end of each of its turn. Yep. So we got to wait till it's turn to come around for it to take damage. But Felicity, it is uh, it is your turn. That was a good that was a good move. That was a good move. Though. Okay. Well, at least it's established that there are all three separate things coming toward us. No one can hear me say that. Yeah, of course. <laughs> no. Yeah. How close are the things now? Uh, same distance or? Uh, yeah. Except one of them has started to like veer off from the others. Is the silence also following us, or is it just sort of stare still where it's at, just commanding? those things to come at us. It's it's where it's at, but you're moving closer to that because of the momentum of the ship. You've, you've made it so that you're not aiming towards the rock, but you're still like, you drop the anchor, but the anchor doesn't stop. You remember right where you are, the chain has a length, because mm-hmm. otherwise it would just rip the bottom out of the ship. Yeah, it's it's yeah. dragging us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're, you're almost coming to the end of that chain. So. All right. It's like it goes, like you drop it and you go... That's over. my next move is to yeah. help with that. I'm going to use half of my movement to get up. Excellent. Uh, and then I'm going to use my feline agility to dash downstairs to the cabins. Ooh, I love it. Okay. Nice. Uh, let me think about that. Do, do, do. You make it easily. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to start loading up the cannons that are on the side I know the silence on. Okay. Uh, you are, let me see. Stand up. Yep, that was all your move. Yeah. Yeah, you should be a good to load a cannon. All right. Loading it up. I think feline agility uses your bonus action, right? Uh, uh, when I move, I can double my speed once in combat. If I do, I can't do it again until I don't move on a turn. Oh, then you can actually you can actually load it and fire. Can I? Okay. I, I thought I thought it took your bonus action, but we established that it's like you specifically are able to load a cannon as a bonus action. Do do it takes two turns. You are able to do it. Quicker. Let's get it in and let's get it out. Uh, let's see. All right. <laughs> pack it up, pack it in. Let me begin. Yeah, that's right. right. Pack it down Excellent. like a musket because that's how cannons work in this world, we've decided. I think mm-hmm. so. That's how they work in this world. I think that's how they work normally. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. I don't need to know how they work in the real Give world. Give or take. I only need to know this. <laughs> no, this is how they work. This is how they work for sure. And I can't be wrong about the world I made that's up. So, so that's true. how they work. Uh, so it's your, yeah, I light, load the cannon. Light that fuse. Which, what are you aiming at? Silent hasn't moved this whole time. Nope. She's just been, uh, she's like done different things, but she has stayed in that same place, yes. She's doing a new thing now. She's getting hit by a cannonball. <laughs> okay, make an attack <laughs> roll, and you're going to add six to it. It is so easy to use the cannon. I'll tell you what. And add your dexterity. Okay. Sorry, add your proficiency, because you have proficiency with cannons. I'm just going to find a cannon when we get back home. Carry it on your back. <laughs> you're a chuffy lad. You can do it. Mm-hmm. 15? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll hit. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like I gave you a cannon. Uh, it's fun. Gonna use it. I like it. I know. It's my turn to cannon. This is so fun. So, yeah, you hit. Roll quite a lot, if I recall. Yeah, it's like a bunch of dice. Uh, yeah, roll 8d10. 8d10? <laughs> eight, eight <D10. laughs> yeah. Okay. This is almost unfair, but all right, whatever. I mean, we're dealing with a lot of random bullshit, so it's like, well... Not everything is going to be attacking from the side of the boat. Mm-hmm. But it's also like... <laughs> 46. Don't fuck... 
46? Yeah. Good lord. That's actually like I know I know we're laughing, but that is only a little bit more than the health that this thing has. <laughs> so raising her head, raising her hands up high, the silence throws her head back to open her mouth even wider, and it swings. You can see the top of her head start to swing back like a an anaconda. And then it's like you can see the uh, if you if it were drawn by that pervert who does Dora Hidoro, you would see like the ridges of the top of her mouth. But instead, you can't quite make that out. But that is exactly where the cannonball hits as her head explodes. And suddenly you can hear a lot of stuff. You hear the second half of the explosion and you hear the wet meat of the silence raining down on the gray stone around. You hear the whip of the wind in the furled sails. So you don't hear it quite as much as before. You hear you hear the water rushing up against you. Hear uh, Ventura de Villard screaming like, it's a silence. We must kill her. And oh, OK. Oh, OK. All right. I, I, as I say, I understand that this is unnecessary. Fine. Good job, whoever. You hear the tail end of the doo-doo's long fart. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was safe. That's not fair. Hold on a second. <laughs> it's like when there's a loud scene in an action movie and you go like, holy shit. <laughs> you like quiet down in the theater. Yeah, yeah that happened to me and <laughs> Taken. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as the smoke billows out of the cannon and a little bit of it is in the cabin with her, Felicity takes a deep breath and sort of sighs contentedly. Yeah. And the, the smell of cannon smoke kind of filling her uh, her nostrils and it is a, uh, a familiar, pleasant, and the satisfaction of victory is almost intoxicating. Mm, it's like roasted coffee. Now, you say victory, but we are still in initiative order. Oh, yeah. Shit, that, that was my next fucking question. <laughs> In this improvised narrative role-playing podcast called Rude Tales of Magic, you come and join artists, writers, and comedians from Adult Swim, Cartoon Network, Comedy Central, Marvel Comics, and more as they fight and fumble their way across the madcap and exceedingly rude fantasy wasteland of Cordelia. Branson Reese and his jester's retinue, Christopher Hastings, Carly Minardo, Tim Platt, Joe Lepore and Ali Fisher stars a group of unlikely survivors, a talking crow, a lich in a wig, a bubbly fawn, a Sasquatch punk, and a tiefling hunk specifically, who must solve the mystery of Polaris University's vanishment and return balance and higher education to their world, and is going to be very hard and very, very rude. Shut the fuck up. I want to talk about rude tales of magic. No I me, just send, no me. I'm T-posing from space. <laughs> just shut up. I want to talk. Wait, let's talk about rude tales of magic. This we're, we're we're smashing through the ad copy. I'm 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 covering my skin in its ashes. I'm getting canceled. But let's talk about rude tales of magic. It's so good. Jess, but I thought you were gonna say shit first. Anyway, <laughs> uh, disclaimer disclaimer. I'm an embarrassingly huge fangirl of this podcast. I will even go so far as to call myself fucking pathetic. <laughs> uh, so brace yourself for something that's going to sound like sycophantic <laughs> bullshit. But I'm being completely, deeply. Here we go. Perhaps off-puttingly earnest <laughs> when I say we skull tenders stand on the shoulders of giants. Yeah, it's fine. You know, it's all right. Like we're, it's it's pretty good. You know, yeah, yeah. Obviously, it's great. It's a fucking great podcast, guys. It's so <laughs> funny. Oh my god, Branson, Branson and I, brothers of the soul for sure. Just same type shit. DM Chris. Oh my god, it's Doctor McNinja. Chris, are you kidding me? We're talking about Deadpool, Chris. We're talking about Gwenpool, Dr. Chris. Ninja Chris. And is that is that Carly Minardo, or the, 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 the famous the famous animator, Carly Minardo? <laughs> they got Joe Lepore, who is just the best smart guy playing a very dumb character. <laughs> and just mm, masterful. That was so good. And oh my God, Allie Fisher, just bring absolutely bringing the energy of like extremely good improviser who had never touched D&D before. And so everything is this like fresh, extremely weird unpredictable thing and oh my god is that Tim Platt of Teeth Like Beak Teeth Like Beak baby the comedy guitarist I love him he's so fucking and also funny. recently on on whichever show Jimmy Fallon does at night oh, yeah. Jim, late, late Night with Jimmy Fallon The Tonight Show one of those ones hell yeah Tim was on that shit I, personally my favorite episode of podcast Thirsty Falls Part 2 uh, oh my 
my god, it's so it's so heartbreaking. It it it, it just touches my soul. And I have listened to uh, Dial E for Elf, which is pretty early on, way more times than is medically advisable. I have to recommend. They got a whole finished campaign, folks. They just finished up the class dismissed arc. It's like seventy episodes because they're adults. <laughs> and it's oh my god, it's so good. And yeah, yeah, listening to listening to this listen to this podcast dropping about four years ago, I was like, wait a minute, they can be good like this? Yeah, yeah. They can yeah, be yeah, like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no shade to anybody else, but uh, you know, there's a certain energy that anyway. And whether you're a longtime lover of the series or a newbie to Cordelia, this tale is one you definitely won't want to miss. Subscribe to Rude Tales of Magic on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Pocket Cast, or wherever the hell you listen to your ding dang podcast new episodes drop every wednesday listen or i'll kill hazel doo-doo you see uh you see two fins that are still moving towards the ship and one that is going like one that is basically doing the swimming equivalent of like the apple loading wheel I, was like, oh, I don't know, man. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a, I'm a computer for coffee people. <laughs> We're not really going towards the the, the, the rocks anymore. We're kind of going off to the side of it, right? Yeah. I should mention, uh, all of a sudden you hear, you also hear a voice that, help, help. This is not radical, man. No, oh, geez. You don't see where this is coming from, though. Uh, but, and it is now Dudu's turn again. Okay. So. My, my question is still is, are, are, are we still in danger of hitting the rocks as we're turning no. away? And okay. the ship is like, now Now it's like, the danger was partially coming from, there was this compulsion that everybody, that somebody, people were feeling to help move the ship towards that way, and you no longer feel that now. And now, okay. you also, whatever calm you were feeling about these rocks, completely gone. This is incredibly alarming. All right, so I'm going to take conk. <laughs> Oh, I keep forgetting about. Sorry, buddy. Uh, and use him as a kind of a club on the on the helm or whatever, so it doesn't doesn't go left. You know, it doesn't venture off course. I'm just gonna keep it. I'm conk. Just keep this straight, buddy. Oh, like the club, like the yeah, like, club, the thing like, that the thing that stopped car theft in the '80s. Yes, yes correct. That thing that people would put on their wheel. Yes, the club. Yes, like a club, the club, the club. Excuse yeah, me. Yeah, I get you. We'll go to a club later. Sensation. Yeah. Go to the Sensatium later. Have fun. Uh, I need to go to this place. <laughs> so I'm using him as a club to, to, to make sure the wheel just keeps going straight. And the next, I would like to move towards to uh, 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 pull up the anchor so we don't get fucked by that. As you, you, you put in there and you were sort of just communicating your will, like uh, mm. Conk stretches out to lock to press against the wood and lock in place and then grows like some roots that kind of pull in tight against the wood and then wraps around the wheel. So that is not that is not turning without anybody's uh, without your say so. Damn roots. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's little little leaves sprout at the tip. He does his little time to flick out as if to say, yeah, I do all kinds of shit. Cool. But he doesn't say that because yours doesn't talk. That's right. Uh, and then, yeah, yeah, you can go down and start pulling up the anchor if you want. I would like to pull up the anchor before we get messed up by that. Okay. It takes more to pull up the anchor than it does to drop it, but you can like... Isn't it a button? Yeah, it's like, it's got the wheel, but it's got the wheel. You got to turn it to pull it back up. Okay. Because it doesn't just automatically... Snap. Oh, I don't have to turn it. Yeah. Well, somebody's got it. It doesn't just snap back up, is what I'm saying. Oh. You got to you gotta actually manually raise the anchor. I thought it was a button to... Oh, okay, then I manually raise the anchor. I gravity helps you out when you're dropping it, but when I you're know pulling what it back gravity up, you have to... <laughs> Okay, I'm just <laughs> explaining because it seems. I'm trying unfair. to double jump here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Well, then for the rest of my turn, I'm just manually pulling up the anchor. I guess. Yeah, it's you're you're raising up a little bit. Uh, next, uh, the fins that were on their way to the ship, the two that were still moving, come up close to the ship and then just start swimming right up the side of it. <laughs> And they uh, reach the top of the ship and they flop over. And there is a moment where you see uh, that these are just these are just fins. <laughs> and on the and on the bottom side, you see a couple of like yellow eyes and like a wide, horrible, like sideways mouth with like little teeth and stuff. And these two things get up and they start moving right towards 
Who's still on the deck? Me. Me. Felicity's downstairs. And Veilguard. Oh, yeah. Okay. So one of them starts moving towards Visk and then like raises its little fa- horrible little face up off the deck and like sniffs a little bit uh, and then goes away from Visk and they both are moving straight towards Veilguard. The one in the water, Visk, roll a d12 for me. Yay. Uh, seven. Okay. The one in the water dies. Like it just like flops over to the side and then like- It hurt itself in its confusion. <laughs> a, a, a tongue like lolls out of that mouth and then some like little legs extend and it's just like whatever was keeping all those in, like whatever muscle was keeping this thing contracted into the fin just kind of sp- <laughs> out and it lays there on its side dead. Uh, Ventura, uh, seeing now that the silence is dead and that one of the fish is dead, uh, he looks- straight down with his big eye uh, and he unleashes a beam of energy out of his eyeball <laughs> obliterating one of the fins it blows into a thousand pieces and like a red mist is left on the deck where were you before this point sick I can't do that all the time well I'm glad you did it now and it hurts a lot <laughs> be honest. I don't have a lot of those in me. Uh, this, there's only one left. Uh, which, like, when the other one is obliterated, it tries to, like, it raises up on, like, four, like, spider legs and turns itself all the way around and starts trying to, like, swim across the deck back to leave. But to do so, Visk, it has to pass uh, through your range, which means you're, you are able to make a melee spell attack against it if you have one of those. Hell yeah. Yeah, kill it. Which one do I want? Can't be a ranged attack. It's got to be melee. Okay, that was the one I wanted to use anyway. I'm going to use a shock grip. Okay, go for it. I'm going to grab this thing by the fin and just electrocute it. Yeah, make an, make an, uh, make an attack roll and do do whatever you got to do with there. Make, like, add whatever you got to add. Uh, do I add stuff to attack rolls? Yes, you add your melee attack bonus, your spell attack bonus. It should be on your sheet, your spell sheet. Oh, <laughs> sure haven't been doing that a lot. Uh... So 14 plus five. You, you don't, you have, yeah, you're, well, you don't usually make melee attack, oh, oh. like, spell it, it, okay. it, but that's the thing for cantrips are often like attacks because you're having to roll because they're not like guaranteed, but yes. Okay. Yeah. That gets it. Uh, it is also, as we've established, sea creature. So electricity is going to a little bit more. So roll that damage and we're going to double it. Yep. That was uh, a D eight. I got a seven. So that's 14 damage, which I think was the same as the last one took. Maybe I'm not sure. Yeah. Good news. Uh, <laughs> it You touch it and it's, you like grip, grip your horrible little, well, not, that's not kind. My many knuckled, horrific spider, like AI art bullshit hands just completely envelop this thing and just fry it. Yeah, it uh, explodes again. It like pops, and like it's it's like <laughs> like a circuit breaker. It's like you were holding a water balloon full of red paint uh, and then squeezed it as hard as you could. So like you are just sprayed in like thin viscera, uh, and that is uh, that is the we are out of initiative order. My little sailor suit is completely red. <laughs> It was white. Yeah, you look like you have joined the bad guy sailors. Uh, <laughs> Damn it, I'm trying not to join the bad guy sailors. Uh, did anybody shoot a beam up here? I thought I heard something down there. That motherfucker did. Point of Ventura. What? Yeah, he, he pulls his hat back on over the eye and says, yes, it is a... Uh, yes, I can shoot the beam out of my eye sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> that was sick as hell, man. I don't, uh, I don't have like a lot of those in me. But uh, I'm glad I could help. How many you got left? Well, uh, and he holds up his hand, and you can see that it is a little translucent. <laughs> he says, oh. "Not, you know, like, like three. Let's not, let's not push our luck there. Mm. Yeah, it's a. Uh, wow. You know what can you do? Quite a talent. Life is made for the living. Yes. Afterlife." made of after living. Anyway, I was asking your sword a question, Felicity. Oh, so you were. Absolutely. Ages oh, ago. Yeah. Uh, flips rico- ricochet around. Uh, ask away. As I was saying before all that shit went down, Ventura told a story that seemed to have you in it. Can you correlate any of that tale? What was the story? I'm sorry. I was thinking about uh, I was thinking about 
No, sorry. I was thinking about killing things. <laughs> sorry, can you give me the high notes? The high notes. I don't notes. always listen when people who aren't Felicity are talking. Uh, well, I understand. I'm the opposite. Uh, but the, uh, so the story went a bit like... Oh, rude. But sorry, <laughs> it took me a minute to parse that. It's okay, okay. There, there you go, there you go. <laughs> Landed eventually. Uh, I'm, I, you are not. You are not. Uh, not making me regret my policy. But go ahead. <laughs> uh, the story went something about uh, so necromancer who was a puppeteer who is quite familiar to us, and I assume should be familiar to you as well, because now I believe you've met them twice at least. You didn't say anything about Spallanzani. Not the time, I think. Maybe, uh, maybe we have this conversation elsewhere, perhaps. Really? Sorry, I know, I know, like timing and social cues are for you, but perhaps not at this moment. This time. What? This particular moment. Why? Uh, you are at this moment covered in guts, and there is still from off the off the side of the boat a uh, voice crying. Help! Oh man! Don't make me intimidate you, sword. Help! I'm covered in blood and very scary. Yeah, give it a shot. Come on. Doodoo looks for the voice. Uh, yeah, you see, now that the ship has swung around a little bit, especially because you let that anchor go, uh, you see a guy just kind of sticking out of this, sticking out of this gray stone. He is most of the way kind of enmeshed in this stone. It looks like it's like growing up around his arms, like almost to his shoulders. But uh, his orange and white striped body is like coming up out of the thing, and he's got he's got you can see like gills on his neck. Uh, the 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 stone is like pulling itself towards you. Like, can I can can somebody kill me, please? I uh I I I, I, I go back to the the helm, mm-hmm. un unclub conk, and uh, see if I can't swing it over there to be like what the. F- what? Yeah, you're able to steer it up alongside. Maybe this seems like an interesting idea to do. Hmm, what about that, gang? Yeah. <laughs> look, look, go, go, di- go, glob. You know my name. Icebreaker, what is your name? You know my name. Yes, okay. So you, yeah, it's not so nice when people do that, huh? Yeah, I don't do it on purpose. Okay, well. To be mean. Okay, I, oh, fair enough. <laughs> All right. Yeah, fair enough. You know what? You know what? You've, you've earned one respect point. From, from Rickless Shave is Wow! I've never gotten to any of these before. Okay, I will have a com- I will have this conversation with you at another time. I promise. Ooh, I'm gonna redeem that respect point so hard. Yes, it is you are issued one respect point, you could later redeem it for a plot relevant conversation. I promise. Wow! I don't even have any of those to redeem with my own weapon. Oh, well that's because it's a stupid gun. <laughs> it sucks. Sorry, I don't like that guy. Damn! <laughs> if I seem like I have an attitude towards you, it's because I'm judging you by the company you keep. <laughs> <laughs> Likewise. Oh, oh, I, uh, you know what? But fucking kill this guy! Come on, Felicity. Now's yeah, the time. I know, I know. But Dude, I... you were pulled the ship up alongside. You see a guy. Hey, what's going on? Anybody got a chili dog? He doesn't say that. Oh but. God! <laughs> <laughs> what do I see when I see this guy? You see a guy uh, who is enmeshed into... Felicity, I want you to make a... Uh, as you're now... Uh, you've now been called over just by the call of the plot. You yeah, see a, I'm making my way over to see what this thing is. Oh, this fella. Yeah, you see a guy who, at the sort of at the top... You couldn't see him before because he was on the back of one of these triangular stones that's just coming out from this place in the water. Uh, but his, he's like... Most of his body has become enmeshed in what you... Felicity, make a nature roll to see if you recognize what it is. Oh, right. And add your proficiency. I'm writing down one respect point <laughs> on my sheet. Yes. Yeah. Don't forget. One respect point from Ricochet. 14. Great. So you are able to tell as you've gotten closer that this, what y'all have been taking to be gray stone, perfectly reasonable because it is from a species of stony coral, is actually brain coral. It is not stone at all. And this guy uh, is kind of coming up out of it. It looks like his, uh, like everything beneath his chest and both of his arms, like up to the shoulders, are just being slowly absorbed into this coral. You get a look at this guy, uh, the orange and white striped guy, as I scroll down to my description of him, which of course reads, ah, he's a guy with orange and white stripes. Uh, (laughs) Although most of his body seems to have been absorbed into the coral around him. Uh, Felicity, you know that career sailors in the land of the living almost always have 
some sort of aquatic biomancy to help them swim better, breathe underwater. It's also sailors are flashy. It's a personal statement. Uh, the common wisdom goes that you can tell a lot about a sailor by where they got their gills. Uh, orange and white stripes on this guy tells you he went for clownfish. Nothing to worry about. He's fine. He's got clownfish biomancy. Hey, can you kill me? I've been in, I've been enmeshed in this coral for so long. You, you don't want us to try to get you out? Absolutely not. <laughs> like, look, this this whole thing's alive. The say, look, the, the the thing down there is alive too. And you see that, like, even though she's headless, uh, the silence is like clawing around in the water and just like trying to put brain matter back <laughs> into that. Like the what's left, and just and also like pulling that the starfish and like trying to like cobble a head back together. Like how how close to us is she? Uh, not far. You're probably within like I would say that like you're probably within a couple of dozen feet of both of these things. What? Okay, and, and the body is and like body is like you know trying to put itself together. It's just kind of there. You can now see that this body just is just coming out from like a an outcropping of the coral. You couldn't you you assumed fish or something below. Nah, just stone, gray stone that it, it, the top half looks like a woman with the aquamarine hair and the whole deal. Huh. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This whole coral is the creature we've been fighting. Yeah, I think so. Am I getting that right? The silence calls people to crash on the rocks, and then if. It gets absorbed by the brain coral. It's happening to me. I can tell I don't have long. Well, normally you drown, but I got these gills. <laughs> well, I uh, don't think we should get closer. Seems like a trap. Yeah, it seems like bad brains. No, oh, but it's a rough call. Please. To kill a man. Please kill me. You don't have to get closer. I'm just looking for a quick death. Uh, I'll give you some. I'll give you some advice. Sure. Okay. Everything would have been okay for me if I just hadn't dropped that treasure I got. Ooh, what treasure? Treasure. Well, I got some great treasure. Where? At Chester Pleasure's House of Treasures. <laughs> it's under the big red X. Well. I see that. Oh. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, it's right over there. Oh, wait, I can't point at things because my arms are enmeshed in this coral. <laughs> no, we see the X. Hold on. He, like, sticks out his tongue. Yeah, no, we're familiar with we the X. We see the X. Don't, don't worry about it, brother. Yeah. He, you know, he, he takes a terrible price, but it's worth it as long as you don't drop it and get absorbed by coral. <laughs> Fair. You really blew it, buddy. Wait, he takes a terrible prize? What do you mean? I don't... I'm just doing... Look, oh, no. The parts of my memories that could have given you more information have been absorbed by the coral. Oh, dang. All right. Who wants to take this one? Who's got a good ranged attack? I do. Can you get him? Let's find out. Just make it quick. I mean, that, it's a rough one. How close is this guy? He's real... He's... Dudu is real good at the ship. Has gotten pretty good at the ship. So you've, you've pulled up, like, within 10 feet. Yeah, I got vehicle proficiency. You do parallel park that. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. You're not quite as good at Felicity as driving, but you're, it's like a lot of the principles of momentum and steering are the same. All right. For variety, I'm not going to do another electric attack. Uh, going to do uh, Grave Grass. Thank which you. Does... <laughs> grave Grass, which does necrotic damage. Oh, that's perfect. Here. And he lowers his head to like offer you like an unobstructed view of his head. Make it quick, Ugh. please. Okay. Thanks for the consent. Feels a little weird, but all right. Do uh, you mind? Do you guys mind if I don't watch this? No, you don't gotta. All right, cool. It's fine. No one's gotta watch anything. Don't worry. No one's gonna kill this guy either. We're being nice. Ventura watches. I'm watching, but go ahead. All right. Just making sure it's all right. Above board. Yeah. A, a like ghostly like gumen hand just kind of like emerges from like the end of a uh, vist's tentacle. It's just very large, and it goes in. Just grabs his little head with all 13 fingers and just like pops it. Yeah. <laughs> like a zit. <laughs> it's an automatic success because he's not resisting. He says, thank you. <laughs> As the, well, I don't want to be sucked by brain coral either. So I guess it makes sense to me to want to die. No, my friends, this was a mercy. Yes, of course. We're pretty good at mercy kills. We kill all sorts of awful suffering beings. Uh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> So that red X, no, huh? It was a good line. I just thought it would be funny to respond <laughs> that way. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you see, as you gaze out on the vistas in the horizon, and you are now, uh, Ventura is able to point out 
now that he has his eye revealed and he is not unconscious, you're actually able to see a couple more locations than you did when you did this before. But you see, ooh, let's see. There's that coming up pretty close, that red X on the horizon. It is now, it is no longer parallel with the horizon. Uh, it is raised up above it a bit. And you can now clearly see that it is like, it is an X that is on a large blue sail. But you can't see what the pole goes down into, but the mass, but like statistically, probably some kind of ship. Uh, in another direction, you see like deeper into the dark, you see a enormous half sunken ship. This was one of the things that you noticed as you were falling down. There's a distant weird shimmering that looks like an X and then a line. It's really hard to make out what the fuck that is. Uh, but there's a huge white windmill that seems to be like coming apart and reforming over and over again. And oh yeah, one another one of those quivering spires that you know to be the essentially the edge of the world map for the Wonder Sea. Well, I'm kind of thinking about that X. Now that man talked about Chester's. We know something is there that sounds like it is not a thing that will instantly try to kill us. And so I think that sounds great. But it's also not the Nevermind, which is our actual. Oh, yeah. And location. Ah, yes. Yeah, and- but oh, we, shit. We should have asked him. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Only you hadn't been bloodthirsty and so quick to kill him. I didn't. I'm so disappointed in you. I can't do everything around here, folks. <laughs> no, this is, this is, he was in suffering. Yeah, he was begging for death. Uh, I was already recently chastised for following a plot thread. What am I supposed to do? Keep being on the I, ball? It was the right thing to do. Uh, <laughs> Just forgot. Forgot the nevermind part. <laughs> We, don't, we still don't know where it is, though. Yeah, I mean, if one of these things, like I, I certainly do not know what the nevermind looks like. But if one of these. Looks like it to you. I don't mind getting the job done early. But if not, I feel like the X sounds like a place where we don't die. Mm. Yeah. This, I'll trust your judgment in this one. Oh, so the instant I try to ease up on managing you people, you come crawling to me wanting decisions to be made for you. Felicity is already at the helm going towards the big red X. No. Oh, well then. <laughs> sure. Excellent. Uh, now, because the anchor has been raised, uh, you make so it. Uh, Ventura caught up in the speed, caught up in the, ooh, the delight of the plot moving forward. It says, ah, yes, for the big red X, pirate style, and lowers the seal, lowers the sails. They're just like the winds, just like in the, uh, when you get the good thing in the Wind Waker remake, the, the wind automatically goes in the direction you want to be going. It's great. And the ship, ooh, it starts making it way, its way towards that red X, the Necrona. Uh, was it Jose? Jose, yeah, Jose in the little, in the little, uh, Julio, Julio, that's it. How uh, could you forget Julio's name? That's my job. <laughs> look, I, I knew he had a, I knew he had a silent H. Uh, uh, he's silent J. Uh, he's J in silent H. He's, <laughs> Julio and his little ship is like looking up, he's looking up at that red X, he's flaring his little, his little, uh, crown around his throat, his neck that he's got, that Ashalotl's have. Uh, perhaps because he's excited because their names are spelled with that X that you cannot ask a lot of as and you're heading towards that X. Ooh, delicious, delicious. It's delicious. <laughs> uh, you are heading towards that way. It's a big red vertical X. When you first saw it, the bottom two legs were dipped for, below the horizon. But as you've gotten closer, the X is rising up into the air higher and higher. You already know it's all, it's a sail but you eventually start to see the mast and it is a tall mast. It is like, uh, you know what it's like? It's like, uh, it's like the, it's like the McDonald's sign at an exit off the highway where the McDonald's <laughs> sign is like nine or 10 stories tall. So you can see it from a long way away. It's just like that. Uh, and as you draw near, you finally see what it's coming out of. It's a treasure chest, the size of a ship. Oh. And when I say treasure chest, I mean like classic, Pirate treasure chest. You know what I mean? I'm talking like an arched lid, iron bands, big iron lock at the front with a keyhole. It's pretty classic. Ooh. Oh boy. This is exciting now. You pull up right alongside it, and, and given the size of this treasure chest, that keyhole is tall enough for a person to walk through. And in fact, as you draw up close and drop the anchor, I presume. Sure. Why not? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, the keyhole swings open, and you see. Engraved above the keyhole door in big letters, House of Treasures. Think the Nevermind's in here? This is more like a. I. This is not. 
It's not a fish that tried to eat me when I got here. That already puts it way ahead of everywhere else we've been. <laughs> Still, I think it's a bit suspicious, isn't it? A bit too good to be true. Mm. Yeah, yeah, probably. But, you know. Have fun. My friends, there were many things that were too bad to be true also. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's actually a very persuasive point. That's actually a really strong <laughs> point. That's yeah. true. All the things we thought were fine actually turned out to be awful. All right. Well, you uh, know, <laughs> how could it go wrong? Yeah. What's the worst that could happen? What could possibly go wrong? How bad can it be? Felicity is going to head toward. Uh, do we? Do we have like a path into it, or do I need to like lay down a board or something? So like, as you were as you were thinking that, a like little rising up from the water, like bobbing up, like almost it's like it was has a flotation, is like a little wooden, like plank, 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 plank that like forms a uh, like a red carpet of wooden planks right up to the side of the boat, side of the corona. Oh well, if they went through this work, I'm not gonna just not walk on it. And Felicity's gonna head in. I'm following Felicity. Yeah, it su supports your weight easily. I'm going dead last. <laughs> I think I will stay behind with the ship, just on the off chance that something is, you know. You know. You know, trap or terrible or... Yeah, yeah. We get you. The very miniest things that could happen. Yes. Yeah. It does not seem like a sea of kindness. No. I salute your bravery and walking un un without, without hesitation into this dangerous and mysterious situation. At Godspeed, you hear a voice behind you. Mm -hmm. uh, the three of you step into a room. Well, I'm, I'm hesitating. <laughs> uh, yes, but not quite enough. Uh, the <laughs> three of you step into a room with no other exits that seems to match the dimensions of the ship that you saw from outside. Uh, as best you can tell, this one room is the entire ship. But there's enough in here to occupy you. Light seems to stream in from the open door behind you, that keyhole further than it should revealing that the entire room is filled with piles and piles of dozens, possibly hundreds of treasure chests of every kind. I'm talking traditional wooden chests, but also long, thin boxes of copper, stone caskets engraved with winged snakes, uh, small boxes covered with jewels, a tin box that looks fused shut, a golden sarcophagus with a Catalian face, a small wooden box with a turtle engraved on it, more and more everywhere you look, and at the center of them all, a single chest, not one of the larger ones, but the most prominently displayed, rests on a stone pedestal that seems to be growing up out of the wood. Hmm. A bit tacky decor. Can I try one of the chests? Uh, yeah, you can, like, you can, which, uh, any of them, like, there's, there's, they're, they're all around. I pick up the closest one to me, which happens to be the little turtle chest. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? Should we open any of this? That's what you do with treasure chests, yeah. You can open anything you want. Hey, 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 hey. Hands off, Mr. Birdman. <laughs> what in the? The chest, at the, the treasure chest at the center of the room, the stone platform below it uh, falls away to reveal a man in a tuxedo with the head of a treasure chest that opens <laughs> as he talks. It's got big, sharp, it's got big, sharp teeth and like a big, gross tongue says, hello there, I'm Chester, Chester Pleasure. Welcome to Chester Pleasure's House of Treasures. Can I interest you in some of our wares? Seems the Birdman's already sold. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought, thought it was first come, first serve. Oh, oh, it's quite all right. That enthusiasm, that desire. That's exactly what, hold on, let me make sure I don't just sound like the mayor. Hold on. <laughs> Recalibrate. Go back to that clip of Johnny Depp. You, you were giving him like a, like a Kano from Mortal Kombat kind of voice. That was really good. That's all right. And enthusiasm is what we're looking for here at Chester Pleasure's House of Treasures. I'm sorry. I thought it was first come, first serve. No, no, no. We've got enough for everyone, of course. It's first come, one serve. Just one for everyone. Oh. And of course, everything comes with its cost. You're the three who've been tearing it up out there on the Wonder Sea, yes? I wondered when you'd find your way to my humble abode. I was trying to make myself obvious to you. A bit too obvious, if you ask me. Yeah, we, we weren't sure what we were looking at, but here we are. Suspiciously so. Want to tell us a little bit about what this establishment is exactly? I'm more than happy to. All right, there we go. There's my fucking voice. There it is. Excellent. <laughs> Beautiful. This is what I sound like. Great. 
All right, he's shaking the king's head. Right. Like, what we got here is treasures of all coins and stripes. Whatever you want, whatever you need. And all I ask is for something in return a little bit later down the line. Uh-oh. Alone. Hmm. Seems vague. What are the terms? Hmm? Well, it's like this. You're adventurers, right? I can smell it on you. You got you got that you got the stink of destiny on you. Yeah. Ugh. Is that what that smell is? This is like checking their clothes just covered in blood. No, that looks like that looks like the blood of a vagabond fiend on you, my gooey friend. Wow, you can tell from the blood. Oh, I can tell a lot of things. Wow, impressive. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> He's like snapping his chest. He's like getting closer to you, snapping the chest like. <laughs> chop, chop, chop. You're interesting. Sorry, sorry, I get a bit excited. It's just, I've been, it's been so long since I've had customers. I, the last one I had was this fool who I knew was going to go get sucked up by the silence, but what can you do? Yeah, uh, can report back. He did. Yeah, yeah, I know. I could see it. I can Some see- of this blood might be his, in fact. Oh, mm, hold on. And he, like, licks the side of you, Gus, with his yeah. huge, gross tongue. <laughs> no, no, just vagabond fin. Okay. Gross little fuckers with teeth and mouths. Looks like a shark fin. Felicity gets jealous because she finds this strange chest man strangely alluring and wish she had actually put on real clothes instead of the fact that she's still in blood-covered pajamas that shows <laughs> a guy with a, right. shooting a fire hose at a pervert. God, you can buy me a drink first. Oh, sorry, sorry. I thought you wondered about the blood. Here's the way it works here at Chester Pleasure's House of Treasures. I give you something. Later, things that might have broken your way good break your way a little bad. I take that little moment, that little scrap of luck. I appear and I snap it shut. Things break a little worse for you. And then I make that into something for another adventure. Huh. It's just that easy. I get in everywhere. This isn't the last time we're going to meet, which is why it's great that I have such a consistent and recognizable accent. (laughs) Noisable. Wow. I see you collect accents as well as treasures. It's fine. Oh, I collect all number of things. You really are quite the character. Uh, thank you, thank you. Another win for Cohen Edenfield's extremely consistent accents. <laughs> so what do you want for this one, says Dudu, holding the turtle, the turtle chest. Oh, uh, you, you get like a closer look at it. This looks like a, it's like a solid piece of wood. It, it's There's no... There's no, like, it Like it looks hard, but it doesn't look like, the, it, it is, like, perfect. Like, you almost can't see the seams. Oh, that one, let's see. You're the... Hmm. Owl, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're the lucky one. I guess. Tell you what, I'll give that to you, and then later, I'll take a bit of your luck. How? You know what, I don't care. Give me the turtle chest. <laughs> Excellent. Love it. Uh, the chest, as soon as you say, I don't care, the chest swings open. Yay. What do I see? You see a small canvas bag that is uh, sent shut with a little with a little a little white string. Those are wonder seeds here. I'll show you how they work. And he, he reaches behind the stone pillar and he pulled that is like just remnants. There shouldn't be anything there. But he pulls out a small uh, like a small uh, clay pot with uh, with dirt. And he says, <laughs> Take a seed out of there, plop it in here. Doo doo does it. All right, you pull out a seed and you like poke it in the dirt. And uh, like as soon as you bury the seed, he like sets the clay pot down. The pot starts rumbling and a full grown corn stalk sprouts up like a jack in the box. Wow. Uh, the corn cobs wither and scatter kernels all over the ground. And then the corn cob just like peels. And you see just a six foot length of rope that then falls directly towards you. You can just like grab it. Give that a peel. I grab it and peel. What the hell? Yeah, you peel this rope like uh, like string cheese, but like as soon as you peel it, both parts are the same thickness that the rope was, and it is now twice as long. I just got long rope. I got infinite rope. That's right, infinite rope. Huh? Do all the seeds do this? Now here's how it works. Well, okay. <laughs> Each seed does something different. Takes a few days to grow a new one. You'll keep the bag, but you won't keep what they grow. Okay. Everything I sell is soul bound. Oh. Yes. Huh? Okay. Good news. Yes, I know. I know your types. Yeah, you you move from place to place. Sometimes you're in different bodies, but you got the same soul. Yes, goes all around with you. Y- yeah, There's something of a transient type. 
Something like that. No matter where you go, anything you buy, in Chester Pleasure's House of Treasures travels with you. It's with you till the end. And then I'll come and collect it. Okay. That's why I was here. I was coming to collect the thing that that fellow dropped. The one whose head you exploded. Kind of you. You're welcome. I mean that sincerely. He seemed to be in a great deal of pain. Yeah. Didn't look fun. Yeah, so that's a bag of wonder seeds for you, and that's a little bit of your luck later for me. You keep the seeds, but you don't keep the rope when you travel somewhere else in a different body. No, you've got the rope for the rest of this adventure. Oh, right. You get a new random thing at the start of each adventure or whenever you want to plant the seed. You have it for that adventure, and then it goes away, but you get that every time. It's a weird one to start with, I admit. I thought it was a per-body basis. Okay, I understand. Got it. No, no, no. The bag for him, you two, something different. No, no, obviously, obviously. I just had, I had questions about Doodoo's thing. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a different seed. They're wonder seeds. That's for Doodoo. Okay. Now, there are two more of you. Are you both willing to take the deal? And he, he like, gets really close to Felicity. Like, staring, there's no eyes. We should be clear. It's just the chest. Are you willing to take the deal? Hmm. Uh, Was that consistent with his accent? <laughs> pretty cool, I gotta admit. Uh, what do I have to lose? What have you got for me? Let's see. For the cat, I think you're quite skillful, isn't you? <laughs> you flatter me. You're so skillful, but you're gonna fuck up. You're gonna fuck up at some point. Don't we all? Fair enough. All right. Then the deal is struck, and you can have this one. And he pulls out from behind his back an oyster chest. It is like an enormous oyster. It is so large that he immediately has to put it down and let, like, spider crab legs grow out of the side of it to just kind of, like, keep it at, like, chest height. It, like, raises itself back up after it puts it down. And it is just right there. It is an oyster. Delightful. You do have an eye for style, don't you? She's going to go ahead and try to open that up. Uh, yeah, as you, as soon as the lightest touch, uh, this thing is covered in barnacles, but they actually move away from around the rim as you reach for it. And it swings open, uh, revealing uh, its mucus glands, uh, all of the gross stuff that is on the inside of an oyster. But sitting in the center on a nice little piece of velvet to keep it from getting gross is a silver spyglass with a closed flesh eye at the big end. Oh. Yeah. And what do we have here? She's like turning it over in her hands. Hasn't brought it up to her eye just yet. Ah, well, that's wise. That's probably fair enough. <laughs> so what you got there? That's a silver spyglass. That can let you see across any distance in a straight line. But perhaps in your particular line of work, you might have noticed some things. Don't bear looking at too closely for too long. You know, the types of things, horrors, etc. Yeah. Psychic waste, things like that. Yeah. This little fella will take the hit for you. It'll, it'll, it'll take the damage from that. You won't be able to use it. It'll have to rest after that. But you can safely get a peek. Then it's got to recharge for a bit. Oh, okay. But until then, it can see any as far as you need in a straight line. Oh, well, thank you so much. Do I get the oyster too? Hmm? Do I get the oyster too? No, the oyster like scuttles away as you ask this and like kind of hides behind it. Oh. No, no, no. All my all my chests are mine. Okay. Made them all myself. Oh, I want my turtle chest. No, sorry. He, he like reaches for it and wraps his tongue around the turtle and like oh. pulls it into his mouth. And oh. you see him like swallow. No, no. Fine. Oh. All my children I made of things I found on my adventures. In fact, this next one's from one of yours. And he pulls out uh, for you, this a scrap iron chest. It's a metal box that seems to have been crudely thrown together from broken scrap iron. The iron is rusted and broken. You can see what look like uh, claw marks and a variety of other impacts on the surface of the metal. Hmm. <laughs> You might recognize this. I made it out of that door. You remember? On the midnight special, the one you couldn't go through. Oh, wow. How in the world did it get down here? How do you know about us doing that? Yeah. Oh, I know a lot. This isn't the first time we've met for me, though it is for you. And I don't know. I get all around. I know all the adventurers. Okay. I know the ones on the sand, the ones in the stars. And I know you, the skull tenders. Some of my favorite. Hmm. Uh, 
That's the name. Yeah. Yeah, I got a weakness for the original flavor. You certainly have us at a disadvantage. Yes, and I will again. You certainly will. If you take this. See, you... You seem... You seem like you've been getting braver lately. Yes? I'm worried I'll be punished for that quite shortly. No, no, you're just gonna, at some point, gonna have a little relapse. Your bravery's gonna fail. Well, that tracks. Well, I don't know. I think you've been doing great. I think you're not doing yourself enough credit. It wouldn't sting if you weren't. So here you go. You're gonna take it? He offers you this, like, hideous... Like, the hinges don't look like they're together, right? It looks like it's going to suck when it... The sound of it is going to suck when it opens, <laughs> for sure. Like the a loud... You, you, you brace for a loud, hideous grinding of gears and rust that somehow also sounds like it's happening in a tunnel and also uh, is, like, reverberating in on itself. Again, an, an audio pleasure. You're, you're braced for all of that. It is, like... But instead, it sounds so quiet. Like, it's been oiled. Sorry. He closes it, snaps it shut. Did I hear a yes? You don't have to, you know. I was hoping to get away with it. <laughs> yes. You're too canny. <laughs> yes, I know all your tricks, Bisk. Mm, I've got so few. Fine. Uh, all right, The as you reach for it, the chest swings open, and you see, sitting in the center of this chest, is a small leather hip flask. Oh? Yeah. Visk reaches for it. Yeah, you pick it up. Uh, stitched into the leather is the phrase, one for the road. <laughs> that, that thing's great. You kill something. You catch a little piece of its soul in there. Let it sit a while. You take a sip. You get a little power back. Hmm. Comes with one free. Take a sip. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, who am I partaking in? Do you really care? Well, Don't you want that power back? Li- hmm? Felicity doesn't say anything, but her eyes narrow when she hears about the captured soul. Oh, there's nothing left. It's had time to ferment in the flask. Ah, uh, see, there's this guy that I'm trying not to be too much like, who does things exactly like this. So I'm not sure I want this. Mm, well, it's yours now. Do what you will with it. <sighs> well, great. I got the dud, didn't I? Mm, that's up to you. Save it for an emergency. Just gave the alcoholic a hip flask. Give you a gun, too. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> One that doesn't work. <laughs> well, don't know if all that was worth it, but whoa, it was... Whoa, 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 hold on. As you, as you pick it up, like, who is this? What? Who is this distinguished gentleman? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Finally, someone with a little class... You hear, uh, this is obviously Jude in your head, yes. and not the guy who sounds a lot like him. <laughs> no. Yeah. This is why I had the other guy sound like fucking Jaleel White. <laughs> Jude, what are you talking about? Come on, take a little sip. Take a sip. What's the worst that could happen? What do you mean distinguished? At first, like, I thought he was flirting with the flask, and it was another fucking object that was going to talk to me in my fucking head. Oh, yeah, head. That, that is. Is that really what's happened? Well, he was, he was, but you're not hearing anything back from the flask. Okay. Flask doesn't talk. Felicity and Duty are exchanging, like, the normal look exchange <laughs> yeah. when Visk starts talking to their gun. It's like, we can't hear any of this. She's just, just like a... Shaking her heads. Yeah, scratching the back of her head. Like looking at her, looking down at her feet. Doing it again. <laughs> Chester is sh- opening a treasure chest and showing you that there's another one inside. And he's like, like doing like a soy face, but as a treasure chest, he's like also opening his own mouth. I'm like, I'm like clapping. I'm like laughing like way too much at all of his jokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude is confused. I was like, wow, wow, what's in that one? What's in the chest inside the chest? <laughs> Dude's not a fan. <laughs> Dude, what are you saying? It just seems, I don't know, do what you want. Tired of trying to show you how to be a good cop. Tired of you doing it too, honestly. Hmm, well, well, fair enough. Oh, I don't know where to go with this character sometimes. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I, I, did, I gave you a thing specifically. Yeah, it's, it's up to you. It is there. An option also, like dude who said, not to take it. Yeah, that's true. That is just as interesting an option as being like given something to. I don't. Ha- I don't have. Okay, this is just, the collaborative so clear, part of there's D&D. not a there is not a right or wrong yeah. answer yeah, to this. Okay, I do I not have sure a plan right for any of these. Yeah. You can do whatever yeah. you want okay. with it. I, I don't want to be a scutch. I'm giving you this. You can do whatever you want with it. Literally. 
question. Go ahead. Of the of Chester Pleasure, whatever your name was. Yeah. Happy to answer any questions in a consistent tone. <laughs> By opening the chest at all, have I consented to the deal, or do I have to take the item inside? That's an interesting question. No, I supp- I feel. Like, did you say yes? I said. Oh, I said. <laughs> <laughs> I said fine. I didn't say yes, technically. You picked it up, though, right? I did, to examine it. The chest has closed. Well, there, there's my answer. No one said you've got to use it. Well. Do you want to, sorry, do you want to do an exchange? What else have you got? Sorry, we don't hold for exchanges. I just wanted to make sure that I knew what you were looking for before I denied it. Uh, <laughs> Can I, have, can I have store credit or something? Absolutely not. But you can hold on to it. Everyone loves store credit. Okay, fine. You got. It says for the road. It doesn't say drink now. <sighs> this stares at the flask in their gooey appendage. One for the road. I guess. Ray, we all got stuff. Yay. Yeah, I love to receive a treat. All right, well... It's never where you're looking, but as you are glancing around the room, it's like every time you see a pile again, it's smaller. And you see the room is starting to, like, contract a little bit. Well, it's taken me a lot of energy to be here this long, so you probably want to head out. It's been a pleasure to meet you. Enjoy your trinkets, and I'll see you all down the road. Sorry. Hold on a second. Ask away. Do you know where the Nevermind is? Oh, I think you saw it on the way in, didn't you? We saw a thousand things on the way in, man. What, is it, what, what does it look like? Can you be more specific? Dead center, love. Fuck. Hmm. The black pit at the center. Oh, well, it seems obvious in retrospect, doesn't it? Shoot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the thing you tried to climb out of your shipping. It. I was having a hoot watching that. Don't worry too much about it. And the ship is now, like, getting smaller. The keyhole is actually a little shorter than it was. I think we should probably get going. Yeah. Okay, bye. Yep. Uh, thank thank you. you very much, Mr. Pleasure. Bye. He's getting bigger, though, as his, as he's Whoa. talking to you. And he's like now having to Goodness. like he's almost like touching the ceiling. He's now like kind of like almost he's like on all fours. But it's like the chest is kind of looming down <laughs> over you, like with the with the teeth and the tongue. He's just, yeah, you might want to head out. All right. We scamper out. Nice meeting you. <laughs> See you again real soon. And the uh, you get out of the keyhole right before you have to like actually duck your head. You hop back on those planks, head up the side of the ship. Uh, look behind you; it's like it's ri- it's just the size of a regular treasure chest. Oh, it's got like a little sail on top with like a red X and on a blue sail. But it's like all told, maybe like that that pole is only like six or seven feet tall. It's like regular treasure chest size. <sighs> Interesting character. Oh, what a charmer. I hope we see him again. Strange accent. <laughs> Never! And then the chest sinks. And okay, bye. <laughs> no, the, it, it, actually, it actually catches the wind and starts sailing away from you. Bye. So, regardless of the items we got, we did get valuable information for what set of an NPC. <laughs> yeah, good looking out doo-doo. I remembered. I wrote it on my hand. And then you see the Nerver, the Nervermund. <laughs> On my hand. <laughs> written in blood from one of the last enemies. <laughs> on, on my feathers. <laughs> so it's very, so it's like. Oh, well, you could have just used a feather, yeah. like a quill. Yeah, you could use those. But like feathers isn't a good like paper. So it's a little smudgy and no. blurry, but it, you can make, yeah. you, you know. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a poor canvas, but a good, but a, it's a <laughs> good medium. So it, it averages out. Well done, Dudu and Felicity. Staying on task. My friends, what did you get? Stuff. Uh, silver spyglass. I mean, what the, what happened? I do, how would I know? This? Okay, so we got it. We went into the big chest, and then there was a uh, oh. very charming treasure chest man. You know, tall, dark, wood, handsome, uh, and it had a uh, had a treasure for each of us. In fact, I have a silver spyglass, <laughs> and she's going to hold it up and like extend it out and then retract it. Pretty cool. I got forever rope. Oh. Wow, both of those seem very useful on a ship. Very good. I got a drink I don't want. Oh, that, oh, I'm so sorry, my friend. Would you like more mimosas? He has, uh, while you guys have been down there, he has brewed a, fr- he has made a fresh pitcher of mimosas. Yeah. Yes, I didn't have any mimosas. <laughs> mimosas all around, because we know where the Nevermind is. Yeah. Hooray. Oh, that's great. Where is it? 
center. Oh! The bad place in the middle. The center. You mean over there? And he points directly at the, uh, in the distance, the half sunk ship that is on the, that is on the edge of the horizon. But it's like, you can, you can't, the three of you, you can't really make it out that well. I don't think it's the ship. I think it's the dead center of the blackness of the sea. Oh, I forget. You do not have any unfurls, the big eyeball. You, you don't have no, a, you yes. can't see so good. Don't have <laughs> yes. I want to look with my spyglass in that direction. Oh, this never occurred to me that you might do that. Hell yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Fantastic. Wonderful. Sincere. Happy. Uh, yeah, you see, uh, you know, the Titanic. Classic, that Titanic, never the heard classic of her. Half song. Who is she? No, I okay. never heard of it. What's she? that? <laughs> Can you hum a few bars? Uh, you see a carnival cruise size ship. There you go. There you go. Half sunk <laughs> into the water. Uh, you see, it is, though it is half sunk, there is a sail that is coming out of the, uh, it is coming up out of the half sunk part. Uh, you can just make out that the name on this ship is uh, the SS Coffin. <laughs> no, it is not. That's what it is. No, it is uh, not. Yeah, it is. No, yeah, it is. No. Because then stepping out onto the deck, you see skeletons dressed as pirates. <laughs> but these skeletons dressed as pirates are also bound in chains as they go apart about their little skeletal pirate duties. You see them swabbing a, for a deck that's at a 45 degree angle. You see them <laughs> loading skeletal cannonballs, <laughs> which are just skulls, into a, <laughs> into, a, into a cannon. And then you see him. You see emerging from he has to kind of pull himself up out of the, uh, at an angle ship, uh, out of the ang angle door to the captain's cabin. You see, he, with moving, you can't hear it, but you can see from this distance the rattling of his beard. You see, seven feet tall if he's an inch. It's Bonebeard, the pirate, with <laughs> his horrible bone beards. <laughs> Uh, oh, skeletal. No. He's got. He is. He has two eye patches. Can we see this, or just Felicity? Only Felicity can see this. Uh, two eye patches. Uh, oh, never mind. Uh, bones growing out of his back in a giant X, like he is a living Jolly Roger growing out of the side of his head. <laughs> and attached to those are a bl are a black canvas to make him a actual Jolly Roger as he walks around and he's looking around and then he looks directly at you. And you see his eyes start to like glow red, and then the uh, ear and the the spyglass closes its eye. Hmm. But pull it back. What'd you see? There was a, a, a skeleton crew on there. A what? Skeleton crew, but like a, like you know. Do you, you know what the skeleton crew is? Yes, yeah, a light crew. Not as many as you would expect to have in a ship. Crew of skeletons, yeah. Yes, they do do. Thank you. Thank you. At least somebody is on the same page as me here. Oh. Oh, my mistake. <laughs> you actually saw skeletons doing things together. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, no bones about it. Hmm. Many bones about it. Okay. Yeah, several. And Felicity, you know. You don't know how you know, but you know. That's fucking Bonebeard the pirate. It might have been the huge, like the ankle length uh, beard made of bones. But like classic, you recognize somehow Bonebeard the pirate. I don't want this to sound like like I like I'm trying to talk fairy tales to you guys. But are you familiar with Bonebeard the pirate? Can I do a history check? Have I read about this guy? Yeah, should make a history check. Yeah, it's an easy check. Maybe I've read about Bonebeard. It was a nineteen. Yeah. So as in your familiar in your familiarizing yourself with the various ways that people have died, uh, that's not that he's in. He's definitely in like the top 1000 ways that people have died. <laughs> I've been encountering with this guy specifically. Uh, you know, he's dangerous. Bonebeard, he's a legendary pirate. He, he's gone by many names, but he, he, has, he has plagued the seas. It, you would not have expected to find him here, it, probably because he's, you know, supposed to have lived like hundreds of years ago. Felicity. Mm -hmm. The bone beard? Are you serious? It's everything you you know. Skull, 
crossbones. Yeah. Yeah. Black cape. It's all everything that you always hear about Bone Beard. That's him. Is what I saw. And I think that he might have seen us too. I suppose we're going there anyway, aren't we? Yes, so. The other thing you were able to make out, Felicity, is like the water all around this ship was just pitch black. Yeah, I guess that would be the right way. That's where the black water is. Well, let's go. We should, yeah, let's head start head that direction and let's load these cannons in advance. Ah, good idea. Now that's what I like to hear. Yes, I'm on it. Let's get loaded. And another uh, two more features of Mimosas come out. These don't have liquor in them. They're just fun. It's just orange juice. Hooray. <laughs> I guess they're orange juice. It's just good. That's just orange juice. There's a little grenadine in there. Hooray. Hooray. Right. It's to prevent scurvy. Oh, there it is. Then what's the liquor for? <laughs> Visk looks out on the horizon towards the, uh, the the skeleton ship and feels like super weird. And it's like a mix between uh, scared and excited and like something else, like like a want or an urge or like a craving. And they mutter under their breath, is this, am I hungry? <laughs> and uh, Felicity, you look about and see that the moon, oh, that moon, ah, it's that classic moon that's been there the whole time, don't forget, is now two-thirds covered by darkness. Ah, now that there was some adventure. That clownfish guy in the silence. Oh, hey, break my heart. But what the can you do? I was... Ah, well... Ah, excuse me. The only sleep I've had recently was when I was knocked unconscious. But we finally have our heading. The Nevermind. She in at the very center of the Wonder Sea, where the water turns from blue to black. And it would seem we will meet a summer assistance there, probably in the form of some a cool big boss battle. You know this guy, Bonnebeard? Well, you're going to soon. The skull tenders are taking their arrest as I take my watch. What tomorrow will bring, I cannot say, for it has not happened yet, and I, unlike my sister Vesper, cannot see the future. But it is the coming, ready or not. All we can do is enjoy their eyes. You've just heard Amber Carr as Felicity Fairweather. Casey Green as a Doodoo the Owl, and Jess O'Brien as Yeast. Skulltenders is game mastered by Cohen Ettenfield, with original music composed by Seth Boyer, with editing and sound design by Jess O'Brien. We hope you'll consider supporting us on a Patreon, where you can find all sorts of chilling and thrilling original bonus content, including an after show dedicated to each episode, Mamma Mia! And if not, well... Where is your sense of adventure?